for the love of God. All right. Hello, everyone. Vasive here. Welcome back to a complete shit show. I have no idea what happened to my computer, but I was doing video encoding last night. I came down and uh, the computer locked up for some reason. For some reason, the the video editing software I use, if it go, if my computer goes to a screensaver, it'll lock up. And then you can't recover it and you have to kill it, which is really stupid. So that happened. And so I, I got everything running. I started the stream. I play for a couple minutes. Space with her lovely being self comes in with a beautiful sub. Appreciate the heck out of you. Turns out no audio is coming through. OBS lost all my audio settings. So I'm really hoping you guys can hear this. I see bars now, uh, but they're all, all the audio settings and channels and stuff that I had set up are gone. No idea why. So I guarantee most of my settings and stuff, or most of my stuff is not gonna work right anymore. My audio is probably all jacked up. The leveling's probably all jacked up. I do see the mic moving. And I do see the broadcast stuff moving as well. So you guys can hopefully hear the game. But everything else is broken. Really fucking cool. And on top of that, Snapcam lost all my favorites. So none of the, the, the camera stuff works anymore either. What the fuck, OBS? Actually, you know what? Something might be happening with my computer because the other day... I went to go make some clips and stuff and I have like a stock folder of like meme sounds and all sorts of other stuff uh, that I use for, you know, video editing. That folder disappeared. It's gone. So I don't know what's happening. But it's really pissing me off. So hopefully, you know what? I did all this rambling. I might as well see if you can actually hear me, huh? Because if not, I'm going to be pissed. Literally, just take the day off yesterday and everything goes to shit. What is this garbage? Yesterday and everything goes hey, to shit. I can hear myself. Garbage. No, shh. Sh I don't want to hear you anymore. I can hear myself. Oh my God. It would not shut up. We're fine. <sighs> so, that's what's happening. Also, the camera's laggy. Fantastic. Everything is going perfectly today. I absolutely love it. Okay. Um, I don't have my notepad. I do have a notepad, but I don't have a... <gasps> I have a pencil. Um, I gotta make a note. What the fuck, OBS? So, I have to go through and figure out... Hopefully, I can remember what the settings were set as. I guarantee that I'm not gonna remember them. Um, and the worst part is, too, some of them are very specific to games i'm playing or whatever if i'm playing with other people because then the audio channel and stuff goes to different stuff i guarantee these are all broken right now so fantastic hey you can hear glad to hear space i don't my computer's just having all sorts of issues apparently but how you doing friend we're gonna be playing some more uh corpse factory uh controller apparently i can't i can't select a thing with the controller so we'll just use the mouse Where'd the game go? Oh. My walk through the train station this morning is confident. Cocking. Cocking. Yes, cocking. Cocky. Self-assured. When I board the train, I even managed to take a seat for the first time in a while. I withdraw a worn book from my handbag and flip open the cover. There's a name scrawled in blue ballpoint pen on the first page, but it has become faded and illegible over time. I don't quite remember where I picked up this book. Maybe I discovered it at a second-hand bookshop. Who knows? I own so many obscure tomes that I can't be expected to recall purchasing every single one. Also, we gotta get the Jada cookie. Jada cookie for you, said thank you for the sub. Boop. Jada, wake up. Well, uh, I'm frustrated now. Stinking OBS just making changes for some god knows reason. Like, ah, you don't have audio settings anymore. You got nothing. Super annoying. It's aged cover and weathered spine both bear the same title. Faust Photography. Comprehensive history of photo manipulation. 
Oh, I read the book and it, that's what it said down there. The book is written in English and it's a slog to work through with my limited knowledge of that language. But I like to skim through it primarily for the photographs contained within. The examples of early image doctoring from centuries ago fascinates me. The book even features techniques and studies as recent as 1930 or 1993 when it was first published. It's true that a lot of the techniques discussed within are no longer relevant in today's digital age, however. Or however, there's a hearty s section dedicated to the art of manipulating corpse photos, something that I am indeed very, very interested in. The most intriguing aspect of this section's content is that the feature featured artists perform the opposite kind of work that I do. Instead of manipulating images of the living to make them appear dead, the artists in the books edit images of the dead in order to make them look alive once more. In bygone eras, when photographs of people were taken few and far between, a sect of artists dedicated themselves to honoring the memories of the deceased. They did this by making the photos taken upon death look beautiful and full of life. These photos were gifted to family members and loved ones. The tradition makes sense. Imagine if you lost someone dear to you and you had no photographs of them. <gasps> Thanks for contributing, space! See, that build hopefully is fun. That's a cool looking ship. Wouldn't it be wonderful to receive one last memento? A beautiful image of the way you remember them? Instead of using makeup to beautify a corpse, these artists applied paintbrush and pinned directly to the photograph to seemingly bring the deceased back to life. The impressive aspect of this process is the way they illustrated the corpse's eyes to look full of life. Even though it's a far cry from the work I do, I can't help but feel some sort of kinship with the artists discussed in this book. Surely we are cut from the same cloth. Browsing through the images in this book inspires me to work hard on my own photo editing. Many of the pictures are in black and white, but to me, that only drives home how impressive these old techniques were. I finished flipping through a chapter and closed the book. I hold the tattered tone close to my chest and breathe a sigh of satisfaction. The next station is Shinjuku. The doors on the right side will open. Please change here for the Chuo line, the Shonan Shinjuku line, the Saikyo line, I quickly stuff the book into my handbag and get ready to disembark the train. When I'm certain nobody's looking, I carefully open the lid of the large dumpster in front of me. The stench of rotten food and who knows what else assaults my senses and I reflexively gag and splutter. The staff at the convenience store really need to seal their trash in plastic bags before tossing it in here. <sighs> The raised open lid locks into place at a 45 degree angle, allowing my now free hands to retrieve a small black object from my handbag. It's a flip phone, a cheap plastic thing with shiny charcoal finish. I open it up and tap on the retro tactile keys, confirming that I've completely deleted all sent messages and photos. Nodding myself, satisfied that I've covered my tracks, I eject the battery in the back of the casing and toss it in the dumpster. I then snap the phone half along the hinge, separating the key from the, or the screen from the keypad. The screen crunches into pieces with a gratifying <laughs> underneath my shoes. I retrieve the smashed parts from the asphalt, careful not to prick my finger on the sharp glass. With hardly a glance, I unceremoniously launch the broken parts of the phone into the dumpster. I clap my hands together to dust them off, then shut the dumpster lid and hurry away. I settle between the brick and wall of the convenience store, of the brick wall of the convenience store and a narrow metal railing intended to keep people like me away from the dumpsters. Now in front of the convenience store, I can finally feel, or I finally feel like I can breathe deeply without fear of inhaling the toxic contents of the dumpster. I let my lungs take their foot fill before nonchalantly crossing the street. That takes care of the latest burner phone. Before leaving the office building, I crack the SIM card in half and dispose of it in the combustible trash. Also, please let me know if the audio is jacked up because I have to watch the VOD afterwards to know. Now with the phone itself destroyed and discarded at the different location, my mind is at ease. It has been slightly less than 24 hours since I managed to message my latest victim, that athletic guy that I may have briefly fantasized about during my restless slumber. Oh boy. Also, let's this is something we can check. And that's silence still. Uh, so fucking annoying. Screw you, OBS, man. My general rule of thumb is to keep a burner phone for t exactly 24 hours after sending a photo. However, I made an exception today. 
I wanted to discard the phone early. Clear my anxiety and get a full night's rest tonight. Besides, it's not like anyone else replied to the messages I send. I love it if they did, but it is what it is. So really, there's no point in holding on to the evidence of my wrongdoing for longer than necessary. If memory serves, I wrote tomorrow's date on the latest victim's timestamp. May 30th, 10.31am. The victim may decide to kill himself today, of course. He could end up he could end up just like Akane uh, Surumaki. But if he's anything like her, he'll hold down until just a few hours before the designated time. He'll let panic and fear boil and build inside him until he can't take it anymore. Or, someone else will come along and end it all for him. I can't be sure. I still don't know what happened to Ruri Hatano. Did she kill herself, or did someone else snuff out her life? Either way, I'll start researching obituaries tomorrow. I'm confident that this will be another successful request. If it is, I'll truly be on a winning streak. With butterflies in my stomach, I cross the road. On my route home, I usually like to trek through the small or close to my apartment, provided the weather is decent. I avoid the park in the mornings as a lot of people walk as a lot of people walk their dogs, and I can't risk my allergies flaring up before I reach the office. In the evening, the park is much emptier. I suppose I finish work a bit earlier than most people, so while everyone else is busy, I can enjoy the fresh air and scenery. I make my way along the neat, broad dirt path that connects one side of the park to the other. Workbenches line the path at, at irregular intervals, and at this time of the evening, it's common to see a homeless person or two using a bench as a resting place. The city has, be has more homeless people than the general population would care to admit. I try not to think much of it as I walk by every day. I already know that many people have it worse off than I do, but there's not exactly anything I can do to help, right? Should I, get, should I be giving these people money that I can't afford to spare? Wouldn't I just end up homeless as well? I'm not exactly broke, but I live month to month on my salary. It's expensive to live on the outskirts, outskirts of Akihabara, and community uh, to Shinjuku every day isn't exactly cheap either. Then you add a lot in electricity bills, phone, food. I mean, I don't eat unless I have to, but I'd starve if I didn't have, didn't buy a meal every other day. You don't even get me started on the cost of the coffee I drink. If I'm lucky, I can score a can for 100 yen, but more often than not, I'm paying up to 150 for a single can. Even if I were to buy canned coffee in bulk from one of those huge variety stores like Don, Don Coyote, that's funny. It still only save a handful of loose change. And I want to have access to the familiar selection I get at the convenience store. Hey, that sound, that works. Did you guys hear that? Please tell me you heard that. Get the cookies for you. Uh, I read that. I'm just thankful that I don't go out for drinks after work like most of my colleagues. If I had to buy a few rounds of beer every week, my bank account would definitely dry up. You hear that, right? Yeah, dude, all the fucking the audios are backwards Ugh, so fucking stupid i hate it they're actually like that came through on the discord channel now unbelievable so stupid uh by avoiding the kind of group outing not only do i save money but i also not forced to spend more time around people it's a win-win situation realizing i'm judging along the path at a snail's pace i tell myself to speed up my gait Toward the exit of the park, the silhouettes of two people on bench come into view. The sound of laughter carries on the wind, and I can't help but feel like I've heard the voices before. As I draw closer, a sinking sensation clutches at my stomach. I immediately get the urge to turn around, but I'm so close to home. Uh -huh. Fuck. It's Noriko. Fancy seeing her here. Shut up, you're loud. Turn her down just a bit. Noriko's here. Tomo and Shinya. Tomoe glares and flips her hair, her long hair behind her ear with a shit-eating grin on her face. Shinya looks kind of out of place outside of the office. His face is filtered by an especially uncomfortable expression. I start to wonder why these two are here, but then I recall that Tomoe did mention they were going on a date on Friday night. I suppose it's just my bad luck that I would run into them on the way home, though. Though, what are they doing here in Akihabara? Yeah, Tomoe is just trying to be a bitch. You guys heard it? Cool. Thanks for letting me know, Space. I have to assume that Tomoe came here on purpose just to spite me. On your way home? Go away. Uh-huh. How's your, uh, date? We're having a blast. Right, Chen? 
Uh, yes, of course. A great time. You're realizing she sucks, aren't you? I wonder if Tomoe has been dragging Shinya along against his will. Okay, well, I'll leave you to it. Hey, we're gonna grab some chicken. Why don't you come with us? I don't wanna. Mm, no thanks. I can't think of any worse way to spend an evening than eating with Tomoe. Please come with us, Noriko. No, don't ask. <sighs> Fuck, I don't wanna come. Shinya has a dejected look on his face. It's pitiful, but he bought, brought his date on himself. Why should I have to bail him out? Sorry. Things to do tonight. Are you sure you're not just avoiding eating? Afraid to gain a bit of fat? Leave me alone. I honestly don't know what to say to that. Hey, Shin, you ever seen Noriko eat anything? Well, now that you mention it, she never seems to eat at the office. This is none of your business. I eat at home, if that's okay with you. It's not completely a lie. Sometimes I eat at home, sometimes I don't eat at all. Come on, come get some chicken with us. I don't want chicken. You can throw it back up or whatever afterwards if it makes you feel bad. Shut up, bitch. God. She's starting to get on my nerves. I swear she tries to identify my flaws and insecurities just so she can rub them in my face. Tomoe, um, you're not being very nice to Noriko. Aren't you two supposed to be friends? I told you we're not. <laughs> we're besties. Besties talk shit to each other, right, Noriko? Right. Yeah, and they punch him too. That's what she should have said. Anyway, I'm going now. See you on Monday. Peace. Okay. See you then. Buzzkill. She's such a drag. Yeah, definitely friend words, right? I let Tomoe's words hang in the air as I walk past her. I'm pretty annoyed that she dragged Shinya all the way here just to taunt me. Is this her idea of a good date? Does she care about Shinya at all? Or is this whole thing just to annoy me? She's pretty self-absorbed, so I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do about Shinya. So my dating Shinya doesn't even get under my skin. I don't have feelings for him at all. What does get on my nerves is simply the fact that Tomoe is trying so hard to get on my nerves. Of course, it wouldn't be fair if I could carry on my way home without one final interruption. Tomoe calls out to me again. Your friend Aoi is going to start work with us on Monday, yeah? No <laughs> fun. I can't wait to meet a friend of Noriko's. Ugh. I grimace. I suppose Shinya told her about that. I turn back to face them both. Don't even think about messing with Aoi. That girl has dealt with enough crap at her last job. Oh, look at that. Look at that art. Yeah, that, that's threatened face, and I love that. I'm here for it. Oh, has she? Maybe big, strong Noriko can protect her now. If I have to, I do step up in her, her face. She's my best friend. If you had any friends of your own, you'd understand what that feels like. Zing. Ooh, she's pointing at her. Well, I got plenty of friends. And only some of them are sluts like yo. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! God, I can't stand her. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. I'm convinced she gets killed. I finally managed to disengage with, from the conversation, even with Tomoe's mocking laugh piercing the air. I exit the park, cross the road, and walk down the block leading to my apartment. Tomoe. I have to wonder if that girl exists solely to irritate me. I have to tell myself she's not worth my time. I can't let her ta taunts get to me. Grin and bear it, as they say. That's what stoic, unflinching Noriko would do. Running a hand through my hair, I smile and approach my apartment building. I spent all morning trying unsuccessfully to calm my nerves. Where am I? Is this a library? I'm anxious about finding out whether my latest victim has perished. It's afternoon now, so the time written on his photo has passed. If my work was successful, I should know soon enough. I've already set up an obituary news alert on my phone to keep me informed. Instead of sitting at home all day and waiting for my phone to go off, I decided to visit an old favorite hangout. Yep. Public libraries don't get the credit they deserve in this age. They're quiet, calm, soothing. I can sit here for hours, for free, and just get lost in different worlds. Plus, I always carry books or carry works by my favorite authors. Sometimes the librarians are even kind enough to recommend titles that might fit my tastes. I don't feel judged here. Nobody looks at me and mocks my clothing or my makeup. Nobody looks at me and asks me if I've had enough to eat lately. Nobody makes fun of me. That lonely girl in the corner reading Lovecraft and calmly stroking her hair. Every so often, I put my book aside and check my phone out of habit. Still no alerts. Have I miscalculated something? Did my latest photo not look convincing or damning? Enough to inspire suicide or murder? I 
find myself growing increasingly anxious and impatient. Ooh, huh? You love craft nerd? You're looking a little rough. Are you all right? I blink twice and look up at the strange man standing over me. Huh? Sauce. Didn't mean to interrupt. Notice you're reading Lovecraft. Huh. In Japanese, too. Didn't know this book had been translated. Uh, yeah. My English isn't great, so I read the translated versions. That's mad. Do they translate esoteric names? Can't imagine Cthulhu being easy to write in kanji. Well, it's written in katakana, so... Of course. Kojiro. Man extends a hand, and I can't tell if he wants me to shake it or pass him my book. Oh! It was Kojiro. Wasn't that the guy with the girl? No, that was Kenji. This guy looks like the dude that... I don't know. I can't remember. This is two days ago. What? I'm Kojiro. You? Noriko. Kurosawa. Nice. Just Kojiro for me. No last name. Call me Koji. You don't have a last name? Used to. Lost it. Fire, you know. I'm just Kojiro now. This guy's weird. His clothes smell like they've been stashed in the back of a closet for a decade or two. His face is unshaven and his eyes are scarily clear and unfocused. Despite being masked by a pair of thick glasses. Um... Didn't mean to keep you. Saws again. Uh, I'm looking for Nobel Sinclair. He around here? I mean, I don't know. Who? Writer guy, did that book about befriending the dead? The librarian told me to check these shelves. Sorry, I don't really know. No worries, I'll find him. You know, you look like the type who- I was gonna say, that sounds like a, my alley. Not to judge you by your cover. <laughs> um... Need a strong stomach though. Messed up shit. As much as I hate to admit it, the stranger has captured my interest. How messed up are we talking? Well, his first book describes dressing up corpses, taking them to dinner. Goal is to not get caught out. Mad, right? Yeah, that's creepy. Like something out of that American movie. Weekend with Bernard. Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> second book goes nuts. Main character fills the school classroom with bodies, all dressed up as students. Runs lectures and records them, puts them online. <laughs> Best part, no one can figure out if these books are fiction. Yeesh. <laughs> Internet says Nobel Sinclair actually did these things. Says he's doing time now, writing these books as a confession. That's a, uh, that's quite creepy. Interesting. Right? It's deranged. Makes for a good bedtime reading. Huh. You a noise? Well, of course you are. Uh, yeah. You? Yeah. At Koji Koji. <laughs> Add me if you like. We can talk shop. I'm gonna find Nobel. Wish me luck. And without so much as a glance back at me, the man walks away. I try to return to my reading, but the whole conversation just replays back in my head. What a bizarre encounter. Maybe I'll just head home for the day. Being here has helped me calm down, and I am eagerly anticipating the fate of my victim. Besides, I have to admit that I'm growing a little bit hungry. Maybe onig onigiri, a rice ball from the convenience store, will tide me over until tomorrow. I gather my things and stand up, letting out a little whew as I stretch my muscles. What the fuck was that noise? As I head toward the sliding doors to leave the library, a little alert sounds from my phone. This is it. My phone was in my hands in less than a second. The screen unlocked and the obituary page loading before my eyes. Article posted today. Mr. Accident Numerical Data Range. Image found. Mr. Aichi Hanada, 22 of Tokyo Prefecture, was pronounced dead this afternoon at a traffic intersection. 12.02 p.m. Coroner's office reports that Mr. Hanada was involved in a traffic accident. No other casualties have been reported. Mr. Hernandez is arrived by his fiance who wishes to remain anonymous. The funeral service has not been arranged. Hmm. Did uh, their fiance uh, request a death? I quickly load the image attachment and can't believe my eyes. 
photo is the exact same one that was sent to me through Corpse Skull's website. Yeah. Same one from fucking the other thing. You know? Or it's the police actually just setting us all up. There can be absolutely no doubt this is my latest victim. I've done it again. My breathing starts to quicken. My cheeks begin to grow hot. I know from experience that if I don't get somewhere private and quickly, I may very well make a fool of myself in public. I quickly, I quickly glance. Oh my god! Quickly glance around the pub, the library for a sign pointing to a restroom. As soon as my eyes settle on it, I dash toward it, swerving between bookshelves and through narrow aisles. There's one door for a unisex bathroom, an unremarkable beige portal. The muscles in my thighs are tightening, and I squirm as I reach the, for the door. My hand grasps the cool metal handle and presses down, only to be met with an with immovable resistance. It's locked. There's a sign on the door. I notice that I completely ignored in my haste. Clothes were cleaning. Shit. I curse despite my best efforts to keep a low profile. My head turns frantically, looking for somewhere, anywhere that I can sit down and remain out of sight while my body reacts erratically to my latest success. That's fucking weird. Yo, you busted? Yeah, I mean, busted nut. This guy again. Or this guy again. I, I need to use the restroom. I hope you can't tell that my expression on my face is not one of desperation to use his facilities. Oh. To my surprise, Kojiro strides up to the restroom door and begins to slam his fist against hey, it. Cleaning time is over. Get out of there. I hear a panic yelp from within. Kojiro's commanding voice was more than a little intimidating. Within seconds, a terrified old woman emerges. She wheels her cleaning trolley around us, bo bows quickly, and disappears from sight. All yours. About to hold it. <laughs> Thanks. Please don't make us relive that whole situation last time. I dash past Kojiro, unable to believe what is happening here. I slam the door behind me and slip into a cubicle. As soon as I sit atop the toilet's closed lid, my legs begin to shake uncontrollably and I have to lean backward to steady myself. Aichi Hanada is dead, killed in a traffic accident. That could mean anything, but I'm willing to bet that I caused his death. After seeing the photo as dis of his dismembered corpse, he might have purposely crashed his car. Or perhaps someone else rammed his vehicle intent on murdering him on behalf of Corpse Girl. I still don't know how my power works. I don't know why these victims end up dead. But the cause of death un ultimately doesn't matter. What matters is that Corpse Girl is victorious once more. I find myself panting, squirming, struggling to restrain myself. My vision fogs, my knuckles clench, and with barely a fanfare, I begin to cool down all of a sudden. Just like that, the overwhelming urge to explode simply flutters away. Huh? My breathing regulates. My legs sol solidify and rest firmly on the ground. This... This experience wasn't nearly as extra staggering as last time. She needs more. Ugh. Maybe. Maybe because I was not... I was so confident that this victim would die. My body already propelled, prepared itself for it. Have I already become desensitized to my ability to wield death itself? I won't pretend that I'm not dis di that I'm not disappointed. That exhilarating feeling I experienced last time. Complete and utter loss of control. It was addicting. I craved experiencing it again. Still... I need to remind myself of the most important thing. I fulfilled the request issued to Corpse Girl. That's two new victories in a row. Two victories in a single week. As long as the requests keep coming in, I can keep achieving my goals. I can do this. Full of confidence and feeling st steady once more, I exit the cubicle and leave the bathroom. That strange man Kojiro is waiting for me at the end of an at the end of an aisle. Good. Yeah, everything yeah. came out okay. Hey, thanks for... You know... I really needed the bathroom. Of course. Been there. Gotta go when you gotta go. Look what I found. Kojira holds up a book with a plain back cover. Nobel Sinclair's latest. Dazed by the Dead. It's a ripper. Oh, what's that one about? Falling in love with the dead. Read it already last year. Time for another go. Oh, here. Strange flower. Kojiro hands another book to me. This one with a brown cover. An illustration on the front depicts a field of flowers. What's this? Sinclair's first ever published work. Strange flower. Title's nonsense. This is the one where he puts corpses in suits, treats them to meals at fancy restaurants. Loaned it out under my name. You take it. Return it before the due date. Can't risk getting fined. Oh, well, thank you. I'll be sure to read it. Sure. Send me your thoughts and noise. 
Right. Good seeing you. A brief wave of his hand and he disappears behind the close, closest shelves. I can't really get over how peculiar he is. He certainly is making an effort to be friendly. I turn the heavy book over in my hands and look inside the front cover for a publication date. 2009. It's actually not that old. Definitely not as old as the fiction I normally consume. I shrug and hoist the bulky tome underneath my arm, then make for the library's exit. I feel uncommonly hungry on my way home. So much so that I decide to stop by a restaurant and get some dinner. I wonder if killing, I wonder if killing stirs my appetite. I often pass this establishment when I exit the train station in uh, uh, Akihabara. It's an old venue that serves traditional Japanese food as well as popular Western dishes. To say I've always been curious about eating here would be accurate. I've been working hard lately, achieving my goals. I can't afford to treat my, or I can afford to treat myself to a cooked meal, right? Why do I find it so hard to justify that? I'm even going to eat at a booth tonight, another rarity for me. A waitress guides me to an empty booth and I slide in before looking at a menu. The house specialty, according to the menus in my hands, is grilled eagle. Not exactly my favorite. In fact, seafood of any variety doesn't sit well in my stomach. I decide to pass on the specials and order something I know I can digest. Omu rice sounds good. I want to eat it. I used to eat it a lot as a kid. Omelette rice and ketchup. What's not to like? Plus, it's only 700 yen before tax. The waitress returns to take my order and I confidently point out what I'd like. She offers me a smile and hurries off to the next table. Perhaps my recent victory streak has given my courage a boost because I can hardly feel awkward or anxious sitting here, surrounded by people eating and drinking on all sides. I'm somewhat calm and at ease amidst the hustle and bustle of the restaurant. I almost feel like it might be nice to have some company. A friend. Perhaps Aoi? Or even Shinya? Might be nice to talk and pass time with. Oh well. In a way, I do have some company. I retrieve a book from the handbook. Or handbag. The very same book Kojiro lent to me, and I open up to the first chapter. Strange Flower. An odd, apparently meaningless title. Still, it comes highly recommended by an eccentric stranger, so it must be good. My meal arrives when I am a few pages into the book. I thank the waitress and look at the omo, look at the omo rice before me. It smells good. It's presented beautifully. I can probably eat at least a quarter of this portion without feeling eel. Ill. <laughs> Did I say eel? I pick up a spoon and slice through the middle of the omo rice, causing a puff of steam to billow up. Throwing caution to the wind, I scoop a good mount and bring it to my mouth. Oh, you're gonna do that with a dragon that You know? It's delicious. There's no other word to describe it. The convenience store meals I normally eat can't even compare to something like this. The egg is soft. Oh, I'm just getting hungry now. The egg is soft, the rice is fluffy, and there's just enough ketchup along the top. I take a second mouthful, then a third. I can't help but giggle a little at the thought of myself sitting here eating like a normal person. All the people around me probably think I'm a normal person, too. Just a girl sitting at a restaurant eating her dinner. Another quiet giggle escapes my lips and I gently dab my mouth with a napkin. I set my spoon to the side and return to the book in front of me. The author of this work certainly is interesting. Nobel Sinclair. According to the bio inside the front cover, he moved to Japan from overseas at a young age. The book was written originally in Japanese. It's not a translation, but even so, the writing style is quite unusual. I can't quite put my finger on what is strange about it. Maybe it's the lack of complex kanji used throughout. Everything is written rather simply, in hiragana, almost like the intended audience is elementary school kids. But that can't be right. The themes contained within are truly disturbing. Maybe the author just doesn't have the greatest comprehension of writing in Japanese. It's true that a lot of adults have trouble with complex kanji. Professional authors, though. Not so much. Anyway, it's not like it matters too much. The book is interesting enough to keep me turning pages. I must be completely absorbed in reading because before I know it, a waitress is politely letting me know that the restaurant is closing soon. I nod and look at the plate of omo rice in front of me. The meal has gone cold, and I only ate three bites. Still, I'm feeling full now, and I really enjoyed what I did eat. I don't even feel any added weight on my hips as I get to my feet. That's definitely a positive thing. I stretch my arms and legs, put my book in my bag, and offer the waitress more, some money, along with the bill. Uh-oh. Please don't crash. Oh. 
The loading screen on that one was a little long. A blast of frigid at night air nearly sweeps me off my feet when I step out of the restaurant. If I know the weather was going to take a turn for the worse, I'd have brought my scarf and jacket. It's the end of spring, so unpredictable cold weather is pretty rare. I guess I can't be blamed for not bundling up. Anyway, it's not raining and I'm close to home, so it shouldn't be a problem. I head down the street and watch a few shop owners closing their stores for the night. They don't pay me any mind as I wander by. It's so loud. My phone bursts to life and rings out in the quiet night air. I grab it and press it close to my ear for warmth. Hello? Aoi? Noriko? Hello? Um, is this a bad time? No, no, I'm just walking home. There's no music right now and it's freaking me out. You're out at this time of night? That's... that's not like you. I stopped somewhere to eat. What's up? That's also not like me. You stopped to eat? Um... Say, about the new job. Hmm? What is it? I spoke to the manager at the maid cafe, but... He said I can't quit. Uh, he can't make you stay. He said that? Oh, well, it's not up to him. You have every right to quit. Did you tell him you've landed a new job? Yes, I told him. But he said he spent so much time and money training me that if I quit now... Oh, fuck that guy. He'll trade it as stealing from the company and he'll call the police. Fine, let him. He can't do shit. Oh, what a load of crap. Hang on. Are you at the cafe now? Yeah, let's go fuck him up. Yes, I just finished my shift. We're closing up. I'll be right there. I'm only a minute away anyway. I'm going to give your manager a piece of my mind. Hell yeah. Look at all this no. confidence. Noriko, you can't... Just watch me. I'll be right there. Yeah, get him. I end the call to spot Aoi's objections. I can't believe how furious I am. Aoi finally has an escape route from the god-awful job, and now the manager won't let her quit? That has to be illegal. I've never met her manager, but I can just imagine his type. A self-important, wretched, greedy pig. Thinks he's the king of the world because he runs a shady maid cafe in the back streets. Can be someone we know. Well, I won't stand for it. People like him are the ones that should be reported to Corpse Girl's website. I'd love to target victims like that. I change direction and take up a running pace. The cool air against my face is kind of nice now that my body is warming up a little. Thankfully, there is hardly anyone around this time at night, so I don't feel particularly embarrassed by running in public. I'm not a terribly fit person, so it isn't long before I feel out of breath. I come to a stop at the end of the street, heaving and clutching my chest. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Deep breaths. Uh, buttons? There it goes. After taking a moment to collect myself, I start back up. Walking briskly this time, I can see the maid's cafe illuminated sign ahead of me. I approach the entrance and read the neon board. Chateau de Cristal. Welcome home, master. Drinks from just 400 yen. Table charge 500 yen a person. Open till 10 p.m. every night. I pass the sign, reach for the door handle, just as somebody hurriedly throws the door open and emerges. Uh, Noriko? Hi. Wait, do you not... Do you not change... at work? The lighting seems jacked up, too. What the fuck? You can't run far at all? Me either. Really? Actually, I can't run, I so... I be here. I... I'm really glad to see you. You wanna go uh, get some teas? Howie gives me a brief wave. She fidgets nervously and straightens the ruffles in her dress. Ugh, I can't believe you have to wear this ridiculous outfit. Yeah, but the costume isn't the worst part of the job. Ugh, I know. Listen, is your manager still here? I'm gonna give him peace of my mind. Howie hesitates and then shakes her head sadly. You just missed him. There are only a few girls inside closing up. Damn it. Ugh, I really wanted to give him a piece of my mind. Noriko, it's fine. No! I can continue. No, 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 no. You got a better job. Bad. Fuck that guy. He doesn't own you. Hell no! Don't even pretend it's okay. This place is torturing you. You deserve better. You have that customer that always gropes you, and now your manager is controlling you? Yeah, fuck them both. I won't stand for it, and you shouldn't either. But, but what can I do? Yeah, quit and come work on the new place on Monday. Easy. Done. I'm honestly stumped by the question. In all my hastiness to get get here, I never even thought through a plan for Owie. Uh... Damn it. That heartbreaking expression on her face. 
I just want to grab her, hug her, and tell her everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. You have a new job on Monday. Get fucking put your clo that outfit in your closet or whatever. If they they don't want it, usually you have to pay for that shit. <laughs> and then if they call you on Monday, you say fuck off. I said I quit. So why can't I? Holly, I know you don't feel like it, but you are the strongest girl I know. All the shit you've dealt with over the years, all the shit you're still dealing with, you're brave, whether you know it or not. My issues pale in comparison to yours, but you still get up each and every day and do your best. I'm proud of you, and, and I want to make things easier for you. Come work with me at Temujin. Just leave this place behind. Forget all about it. I don't know if the lack of music is on purpose or it didn't load during the weird ass loading screen. Noriko. But it's weirding me out. It's making friend. me uneasy. You always will be. Even if we can't be anything more than that. I'm happy just having you in my life. Is that me hitting on her? I'd do anything for you, Aoi. And I hope you realize that. Of course. I know. Thank you, Noriko. Let's get out of here. It's really late. Come back to my place. Give her a blue stripe in her hair. You know I can't. I... Why not? All my things are at home, and I need... Okay, that's fine. I need to check everything first. Are you gonna be okay? I nod calmly. I understand. I can't push her too much. Don't worry. I get it. Can I walk you home? And the thing is, I can't just run away from this place. That stalking customer. Oh, he shit. That's where I live. And, well, if I stop showing up to work, he said he'll visit me at home. No. No, no. Why don't we go to the police? Oh, time to corpse girl that asshole. I can't do that. Why? She said there was a reason why she can't do that, and I don't remember why. Without warning, Aoi bursts into tears just as rain begins to fill from the clouds. I can't get him in trouble. Why? I just can't. Oh god, something's gonna wreck my heart, isn't it? Aoi, what? what? Is he police chief? He's... Uh. I don't like it. A gust of wind blows down the narrow street, causing my hair to whip widely in my face. I brush it out of my eyes and mouth, only see how he's standing, still her head down. Stalker. That's... I don't like this game anymore. I... I could never bring myself to tell you. But surely you must have wondered why I've put up with it for so long. I... I don't know what to say. I'm stunned. Putting up with it because you don't want him arrested. I gotta. Huh, I hadn't been breathing. I don't like it. Yes. If he goes to prison, the rest of my family will disown me. And. Fuck him! Truly have no one. No! You have me! Fuck these. T everyone else. Oh, man. Their society, though, is like if you get disowned by your family, it's fucked. You have me. Yeah, you have me. You know what I mean. Just going to go home for tonight. Uh, Thanks for coming out to see me, Noriko. This is fucking awful. Howie oh, turns on her heel and shoals away. The click clack of her shoes against the wet pavement echoing through the street. Howie. Oh, she doesn't hear me breathe her name as she disappears in the darkness. That poor girl. There has to be something I can do. <gasps> I can actually fucking have a choice for something. I'm gonna go. I can't let her go. I can't let her walk away as had and helpless as she is. I like lurch forward on, on of their own volition, propelling my body through the rain-soaked street. That's the first option I've had in the what three plus hours I've been playing. Owie! Owie, come back! My shout echoes in the night. My weightless words falling through the air like the very rain that patters against my face. Owie's silhouette is just out of reach. If only my weak body could pick up its pace. I might be able to reach her before she fades away. Stop. Oh no. Her 
unexpected command fulfills its purpose. I halt my shoes skidding along wet ground. I was closer, closer than I expected her to be. Perhaps due to some trick of the light and rain, she simply seemed farther away to my tired eyes. Ellie, please, let me help you. There's nothing to be done. Oh, this is awful. Why can't you take a hint? I... You just never give up, do you? I care about you, though. You just want to smother me. This is smothering? Oh, no. You don't trust me to handle things on my own. That's not it. Then why are you asking? I just care for you so much. Then why are you asking for my help all the time? I know that. You think you haven't made that clear in the past? Really have I seen Aoi this angry. She's well past the point of being simply upset now. She's truly furious. Have I overstepped a boundary? I think so. You're not my guardian angel or my savior or whatever. But you keep asking for help. I'm so fucking confused. This is my life, Noriko. It's not your sick fantasy where you swoop in and act like my knight in shining armor. Am I being ghastly right now? I can't get another word in before she vanishes into the night. I reach a hand out into the darkness like some foolish attempt to stop her, but I know it's pointless. I knew we should have let her go. Oh, fuck, man! She made her thoughts perfectly clear. She doesn't need or want my help. She do Then why is she ask? Even if she cares for me, she doesn't love me in the same way I love her, and I don't think she ever will. I sigh and look up at the thick cloak of clouds above her. I was just going to walk her home and make sure she gets home safe. The rain continues to fall. This reminds you of friendship. Oh, I'm sorry. Dude, that sounds shitty. Like, I need your help. I need your help. Please help me. Please help me. And then it's like, all right, well. Ugh, fuck, man. That fucking sucked. I didn't like that at all. The day drags on and on. Since I don't work weekends, I never really know what to do with myself during my free time. The library yesterday was nice, but I don't want to hang out there again today. So far, I've spent the day simply reading at home and brewing the occasional cup of tea to start stave off my hunger. I keep checking my phone, but Aoi hasn't replied to any of my texts. Even when I call, she lets it go to voicemail. See, now that's a little much. She, she said, leave me alone. And you keep calling and texting. Mm. I don't even have any new requests to attend to. I was hoping I would get at least one one this weekend to help occupy my time. To take a break from reading Strange Flower, I decided to browse through noise and see what's happening in my social circle. Though I'm not close to any of the people I'm connected to, save for Aoi, reading through their posts will always lose my mood. Rather annoyingly, the first person I come across is from Tomoe. Bitches be tripping if they think they gonna steal my man. We thick as thieves. He getting lucky tonight. She's fucking weird, dude. Your garbled post is occupied by a photo of her and Shinya getting cozy together. Shinya looks more than a little nervous. I'd be willing to bet that Tomoe is his first girl he's ever snuggled like this. I can't quite figure out why she's so interested in him, or why he's into her, for that matter. She's interested. She actually could be interested in him, but it feels more like she's interested in him because she thinks I'm interested in him. At first, I thought Tomoe was just trying to bug me, to annoy me, by pursuing someone she thought I wanted. But surely this is taking it too far, right? Haven't I made it clear that I don't care? As for Shinya, maybe that boy really is into the blow-up doll look. I guess I understand him less than I originally thought. I noticed that I've been frowning while looking at Tomoe's post, so I decided to slam my finger down on the thumbs down button. <laughs> A little text box below the post now reads, Noriko Kurosawa dislike. Yeah, why would you? Ugh. Bad move. That's just going to confirm to her that, ooh, if you don't care, don't fucking respond. I frown breaks and I smirk. It feels somewhat satisfying to publicly dislike Tomoe's post. No, fucking, uh, I can imagine Tomoe's face going tomato red when she reads the notification. No, because she's going to be like, haha, I was right. You do like him. With a little giggle, I scroll past the post and keep browsing my feed. As expected, it doesn't take long to find a post from Shinya himself out of character for him, but he's actually not posting about criminal cases and detective work for once. Shinya Shin with a capital S. 
I never believed in love until I met her. She, was, she, she swept me off my feet and showed me how to become a better man. She makes me want to be the best person I can be. My heart goes out to my darling Tomoe. Two days together and counting. Ugh, this is yucky. I look forward every day because of you. Thank you. Ah. Uh, I was just gonna say that that stuff makes me gag. I have involuntary gag and continue scrolling. When people are like, "We're so madly in love, we're the best," uh, blah blah blah. You've been dating for two days. I'm sure you're happy together. That's fantastic. But posts like that drive me fucking nuts. It's been fucking forty eight hours. I've had flus that last longer. Ugh. Nothing else in my newsfeed really compares to those last two posts. My sister wrote something about her sucky job, and a few co-workers post about how grief-strucken they were about Akane Tsurumaki passing away unexpectedly. Akane Tsurumaki. Followed closely by Aichi Hanada. And long before them both, Ruri Hatano, the one who started it all. Three strangers. Three people dead, all because of a corpse girl. People wanted them dead, and because of that, I also wanted them dead. I won't forget their names. When Corpse Girl rises above the muck and filth in this world and becomes truly famous, I'll share a toast to their memories. Until then, I need to trudge forward. I need new targets, new victims, to launch Corpse Girl's names and name it at the start. It's always a red flag when it's all over. Yeah, right? It's like, why do you gotta convince everyone else that this is amazing? Like, why, why do you need everyone else to know? It, yeah, it, it's always like a whole, like, cringy feelings, like, why? Something, something doesn't add up here. If Corpse Girl's website becomes more than an urban legend, more than a rumor whispered of in the shadows, then, no, I need to take it slow. I can't get too far ahead of myself. I still need to put in a lot of work before I can attain my goal. But, the only way I can move forward is if more requests come through the website. There has to be a way to promote the site. Flashy advertising is out of the question. I don't want the site looking like a gimmick people can visit simply to, to pass the time. I need word of mouth. Testimonials. So far the site has claimed three victims. I need the original requesters to spread the word about how effective the website really is. Yes. That would be perfect. But I obviously can't get in touch with them now. They remain anomaly, uh, anonymous. Anonymous. Now I can't say the word. Anonymous. That's right. When they request, when they request a death, no one would willingly put in their contact details when doing something so shady. Anyway, I sigh and scratch my head. Thinking about it is like, like this won't do me any good. Maybe I should come back to it later. I reach for my laptop, sitting on the couch next to me. Maybe I'll just take one more look for a new request. You never know, right? I log into the administration panel of Corpse Girl's website and check for notifications. One new request. Please don't be someone I know or care about. What are the chances I would check the incoming request so soon after receiving a new one? What if it's me? My heart begins to race as the attached photo downloads to my computer. No, it's going to be Aoi's family member. I'm excited about the prospect of working on new requests for the rest of the evening. Who will the poor suckers succumb to corpse girl's vic wins? Will another beautiful corpse be left in my wake? No! I called it the first time. My heart skips a beat and my hands instantly turn cold. What the hell? A photo of myself appears on my screen. It's the very same image used for my company ID tag. Oh, it's fucking what's her name? Tomoe got really mad that I downvoted her post. I'm not smiling in the photo or in real life. Is this some kind of joke? Somebody has requested my death. Somebody has requested my death. I don't like that's doki doki. <laughs> I don't like looking at it. I'm gonna read the text. I can't believe it. I don't like this. This is freaking me out. It finally happened. I know exactly who requested my death. Tomoe! That stupid vapid bitch! Right, very doki doki. It looks like what 
fucking what's her name? Stabby McStabberson. Someone wants to know the one person who hates me more than I hate myself. Watch this can be Owie. That would fucking suck. Why? Of course she's the one who uploaded my photo. Of course she wants Corpse Girl to take care of me. She's been looking for somebody to test the website on. Her noise post from the start of the week confirms that. And she has been getting increasingly obsessed with to uh, tormenting me lately. I'm willing to bet that when I disliked her last latest post, it finally triggered her to request my death. <laughs> you brainless whore! I am Corpse Girl! <laughs> I think I'm experiencing a mental break. In a fit of man a manic laughter, I set to work dismembering my photo. My photo. I'm going to make my corpse look so realistic that she'll think she really succeeded, succeeded in getting me killed. And then when her guard is down, I hate this. Please don't make it. A, like, if it's Owie, I'm going to be completely... I wouldn't say shocked because I'm kind of anticipating it, but I'll be fucking lost. Exactly professional to be late on your first day of work. I grind my I grind my teeth and hope that Shinya can't sense my anxiety. She'll be here. I don't believe the bitter words that tumble out of my mouth. I send another message to Aoi's seemingly abandoned phone, not really expecting a reply. Actually, she's not the only one absent. Tomoe isn't here either. He doesn't need to tell me that. I've been watching her desk like a hawk ever since I came in this morning. There's a small surprise waiting for her in her top desk drawer. Courtesy of yours truly. I've been eagerly anticipating her arrival for an hour now. I taste something in my foul mouth. I don't really need Shinya's recap of his night with Tomoe. Don't you have work to do? Ah, Yuri, that was her course. name. In Doki do. Doki. His vocalized thoughts trail off as he wanders away. I return my focus to the keyboard in front of me. As I type, let her scroll across my screen seemingly slower than usual. No Aoi, no Tomoe. The static drone of the office environment is just as loud as ever, but without those two here, something feels off. Aoi shouldn't be missing her first day of work. You say what you want about Tomoe, at the very least, she's punctual. For her to be this late is very unusual. Oh, a word, if you please. Hello, mommy. Why is she gotta be so hot? A soft, I, I almost read, I, my brain confirmed, uh, confirmed, and then I confirmed again. My brain combined burp, ugh, fucking butt and sharp and made it burp. That's what happened. That, oh my God. She's hot, right? I'm confused and stammering. A soft but sharp voice snaps me out of my thoughts. I look up to find a middle-aged woman standing over me. One hand beckoning in an intimidating fashion. Yes. Can I help you? Game loving lovers, hey! How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Sorry, my um, my OBS startup today lost all my audio settings, so like none of my alert sounds work. Uh, I barely got the game sound and the mic to work within like two minutes of stream starting up. So I apologize, but thank you so much for the raid. I appreciate it. What were you guys playing? You're playing eight six two. Oh, how far are you? I. I played some of that with a friend and then uh, I'm not going to spoil anything because I don't know how far you are. Uh, you beat it last year. Okay, you beat it. So you're very much aware. You're playing through it again? Why would you put yourself through that torture? Spoilers to anyone that has not played that game or seen it or anything. I broke at the elephant part. I couldn't do it. I had to, I had to leave and my roommate came and had to finish it and then we never visited it again. You wanted to see the elephant scene again? Bruh. Wait, was that a joke? Cause that's not okay. No, 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 That must be clarified. That, that was the joke, right? Cause that was awful. I literally could not do that spot. It was so messed up. I couldn't do it. I'm cold. I'm cold. The joke was want to see it again. Okay. Yeah, that part. And it just got worse and worse. And I left. I never know what happened there. 
no, that's not true. I had to fucking rewatch it. And what happened when I uploaded it to YouTube so I could like do the timestamp stuff. So I know everything and I had to watch it. It was awful, but we never went back to it. Like the rest of the game was fantastic. I loved it. But that messed me up. And then uh, I had some lovelies in the channel tell me that it's like, yeah, it's that's not the worst part or it gets worse or it's just as bad later on. So I was like, well, I don't want to put myself through that again. Oh. Oh, but thank you so much for the raid. I appreciate you. If you guys don't know me, I'm Vasive. I'm a variety gamer here on Twitch. Um, right now we're playing through a visual interactive novel called Corpse Factory. If you've seen Death Note, it very it feels very Death Note-y. And uh, some really messed up stuff is happening, so I apologize. And uh, yeah, we're learning things. It doesn't get worse than that. That's literally the worst part. Okay. Yeah, that part was... That was awful. Oh, we gotta make our daughter cry to bleh, get a set of spells. Like, really? You're that excited about... Making your daughter cry? Y'all, CPS needs to get involved. You know what I mean? It's also... Also, um... I always, I always forget how raids and stuff work. But the real story show is this being right here. This is Jada. Jada, hey, wake up. Good morning. Good morning. What are you doing? Oh, she go back to sleepies. That's Jada. She's the real star of the show. She's she's a good bean. Also, I just realized that uh, I, I'm doing some recent changes to uh, my overlays and stuff. And apparently my camera isn't on that scene anymore. So whatever. No big deal. You want some puppet by pets? See, all the sounds are broken. Really freaking annoying. Yeah, you want booty patents. It's booty patting time. It's booty patting time. Oh, I need him. Hi, how are you? Oh, give me this baby. Oh, oh, kick him them toes. Kick him them toes. Oh, get some scratches. Oh, 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 get him. Oh, there's a bug. I smush it. Hi. Can I go for a kiss? Oh, girl. The over here. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah, so I gotta figure out what's broken with the uh, OBS and breaking all my sounds, but that's um, that light is ungodly bright now. Holy crap. Why did that get so bright? Hold on a minute. Making me blind. All right, that's slightly better, I hope. Anyways, back to the game. Kotomi, uh, did I miss something? Log. Uh, she did that. Kotomi Ida, an executive who oversees a lot of the juniors on this floor. I deal with her a few times a week. She's a serious and critical person, but I've seen a warmer side of her when she chats with colleagues of her own level. Miss Ida, did you need something? Please come with me. Okay. I reluctantly rise from my chair and follow her through the office. She leads me to one of the glass screened cubicles that line one wall of the office. Why am my chair is sliding me? <laughs> Special space is reserved for meetings and temporary workstations. Take a seat. Uh huh. I follow her instructions, sitting down on one of the bright and colorful plastic chairs that fill the enclosure. Come on, chair. Fix yourself. A new employee was supposed to start work today. Sato, an acquaintance of yours, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. I've been trying to get in contact with her. I see. You understand that it doesn't reflect well on Sato's character Stinkin if she can't arrive on time for her chair. first day of work, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I understand. Believe me, it is very out of the ordinary for her to do Chair is sliding like everywhere, driving me nuts. Oh, I'm sure. Fujikawa recommended Sato for the job based on your personal request. Don't punish him. You need to be aware that since Fujikawa holds rank... Oh man. He is the one who will be reprimanded for hiring an unsuitable employee. Now, 
I wouldn't go so far as to say that he will be punished. Rather, his recommendations will be denied for the foreseeable future. And any attempt he makes to climb the ladder, so to speak, will be vehemently refused Jeez. by the other executives. Isn't that a bit extreme? A little bit. All of that because of one temp employee that didn't show up for work? That's the way these things go. I've seen it dozens of times. The reason I'm telling you this is because you should feel some sort of responsibility to apologize to Fujikawa. I had no idea. Honestly, I... Enough. This isn't an open discussion. I was just talking. I wasn't discussing. Apologize to Fujikawa and see if he will find it in his heart to forgive you. And please advise him to seek employment elsewhere. I don't foresee his career with us. Fuck, dude. Now, if I blow up at Aoi, that's going to just make everything worse. That's all. Kotomi abruptly exits cubicle and leaves me alone, sitting in a stupid green, or stupid looking green plastic chair. I take some ties, time to compose my thoughts before also walking out. I don't know what to say to Shinya. I don't even know if I could say anything. Surely Kotomi is being a bit extreme in effectively halting Shinya's career at Temujin. This is all because I recommended Aoi for the job. I feel like an idiot. How was I supposed to know that Aoi would prove unreliable? And still, it's far too extreme. Kotomi is out of line. Something else is at play here. I can feel it. Maybe Kotomi wants Shinya gone for her own reasons. But I can't imagine why. He's a junior employee, not exactly as hyped to step on anyone's toes and make enemies. I return to my desk in a bit of a huff and slump in my swiveled chair. My eyes fall on the empty can of coffee next to my computer screen, and I begin to wish I'd purchased more than, <laughs> more than one this morning. That light still feels really bright. Glancing over the top of my screen, I can see that Tomoe still hasn't arrived. Maybe I'll have to wait until tomorrow for her to find the gift I left for her. I'm sure she'll love it. I don't enjoy my walk home through the park this evening as much as I normally do. There's too many things weighing on my mind. Aoi, Tomoe, Shinya, and Kotomi. Why is it that I'm increasingly finding myself drawn into office drama? I don't want to deal with any of it. I just want to pursue my own goals. Working at the office is, is a means to an end. A way to keep a roof over my head and have the money to achieve Corpse Girl's ambitions. Also, I haven't read that book in a while. If I could quit, I would. But I can't. Not just yet. I wonder if I can monetize Corpse Girl's services. Users could pay a fee to request a death. Or I could even just accept donations. Yeah, that's how you can get your stuff tracked. But I get the sinking feeling that asking for money will reduce the amount of requests I get. The number of requests coming in is already depressingly low. If I reduce it any further, I'd be in trouble. As I draw closer to the, my apartment building, my phone cries out for attention. I bring it to my ear with a swift hand. Aoi? N Noriko? What's the deal? I've been trying to get in touch with you all day. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to come into the office. Yeah, well, I gathered that. Tell me why. You know, just the stuff I normally have to deal with. For real? What are we talking about here? Stalkers? Or your own battles? Um, I... I left the apartment twice. I really did. But I had to go back inside each time because it didn't feel right. I had to check a few things, and then check again, and... In the end, I gave up and laid in bed. I must have fallen asleep. Because when I looked at the time, it was already late. I thought angrily and hope that Aoi doesn't hear me. I was just gonna th I was thinking OCD as well. Like, actual OCD. <sighs> Alright. It sounds like you had a rough day. Sorry, but the situation isn't great. I'm just going to be honest with you, okay? I don't think they'll be happy with you if you come in tomorrow. If I were you, I'd write a polite letter of resignation and just Oof. forget about the job. Shinya. Shinya's been kind of thrown under the bus because of this. Shinya? Well, why? Oof. I'm not too sure myself. Since he got you the job, I suppose he was 
somewhat responsible for you. But because you didn't come in, it sounds like his career Fuck. is in real jeopardy. Oh god. Oh no. No. Take a breath. You didn't know something like this would happen. I didn't either. I think this one exec has it out for him or something because it's too much of an overreaction. I can't believe it. I never wanted to cost him his job. I know. You didn't mean for this to happen. Look, I'll try and smooth things out a little. I'll talk to Shinya tomorrow. You need to look after yourself right now, okay? Promise me you'll just take it easy tonight and relax. Okay. Forget this ever happened. Noriko will look after everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Noriko. I end the call with a heavy heart. I don't actually have any idea what to do. When it comes to Aoi, it was a, Aoi, I always feel obligated to just tell her anything that will help her feel better. If I could actually follow through with my words and genuinely make things better for her, then... Well, maybe we'd have a bit of a different relationship than we do now. But I probably missed my opportunity for that a long time ago. In senior high school... I was never really truly understanding of her, and that cost me too much. Things are different now, of course. I've seen what she goes through. I'd like to think I understand her a lot more now. My feelings for her are true, and not muddled in sympathy or pity. If this was a different life, and, hadn't made all the, and I hadn't made all those stupid mistakes, I would be happy to be with her. But now, the best I can hope for is what she wants to remain friends with me. And that will have to be enough to satisfy Yo. me. Fuck off, you! That voice... A trickle of icy sweat drips down my spine. In the near distance, sitting on the bench close to the park's exit, is an easily recognizable figure. No. I freeze in my tracks. My body wants me to keep walking to reach the familiar safety of my home, but my brain is engaging in its fight or flight mode. Torn between my options, I find myself completely stationary. Come on, I won't hurt you. I don't like you. There's no doubt in my mind that she's been waiting for me here all afternoon. She knows my route home. She's obviously obvious. It's that's obvious since I last encountered her and Shinya in this very same park. I can't help but tense up as she leaps off the bench and approaches me. Weird shit, right? Like occult stuff. Leave me alone. Uh, maybe. Is that what you came here to ask me? Nah, just listen, okay? I wanted the opinion of someone freakier than me. She really knows how to flatter a girl. kind of dumb, you know, but... Have you heard of that corpse girl website thing? Who does she think she's talking to? More importantly, how should I respond? I've heard rumors. Yeah, right? I heard rumors too, so I checked it out. I thought the whole thing was really funny. Like, could it be for real? Anyway, maybe I kind of used it to request a death. Is that so? Tomei has pretty much straight up admitted that she was the one who requested my death. After all, I know exactly how many requests come through the site. The latest one ha had to have been from her. Yeah, and, uh, well, you know how the site works, right? Hmm, fill me in. All you do is put in a photo of a bitch and her phone number. Then she's supposed to drop dead. Simple as that. Thing is, no one knows how it works. Or if it works, actually. Right... Okay, so you requested somebody's death, and what happened? Well... This is it. This is where she admits that she uploaded my folder. I've caught her red-handed. The dumb bitch went and died. Was this Urumaki? I blink a few times. I'm positive I didn't hear that right. What did you say? The chick whose photo I uploaded. She's deader than a doorknob. Who's Tomoe referring to? My mind is racing frantically, scanning through the list of Corpse Girls victims all over the past few months. The only people who have died recently are Kane Tsurumaki and Aida Hanada, or Aichi Hanada. Tomoe is talking about a female, so that rules out Aichi. Then there's Ruri Hatano, but she died such a long time ago. Last year, in fact. Surely Tomoe wasn't the one who requested her death. It's way too long ago for her to be bringing it up now. That leads me to believe the only person Tomoe could be talking about is Akane Tsurumaki. Or has somebody else died? Someone I never found out about? 
That's impossible. I've been so thorough in searching for the results of my work. The only victim that Tomoe could be talking about is Akane. But wait. No, that can't be right. Tomoe requested my death. Somebody. Tomoe! Uploaded my photo to Corpse Girl's website just recently. I take a deep breath, swallow hard, and open my mouth. Or it was Aoi that did it, and that's why also she couldn't come into the office. Tomoe. What you're saying is really serious. Are you sure this person died? Yep, no doubt. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. You're fucking weird, May. If you're good with this occult junk, how do you think she died from a website? Do you reckon my request really killed her? Because I don't really want this shit on my conscience, you know? Oh no, how terrible. That you don't want it on your conscience for being a terrible person. I... I don't know what to say. <laughs> Come on. I was only really joking around with the website. Didn't think for a second that it could really work. But now, this bitch is cold in the ground, and I can't sleep at night. Keeping Shinya close is the only thing making me calm lately. Wow, what a fucking suck a bitch. I can't sleep at night. Some Clear my conscience. I didn't think it was going to be real. Who gives a shit? The, the very thought that you were like, but in case. No, screw you. I don't care about you. Tomoe seems to be sh showing a little remorse, but which I didn't think she had in her. If she thought the website was a joke, then fair enough. It's only natural that she'd want to play around with it. But you got to think, but on the off chance it happens, then you feel like a shitbag, right? She didn't, that didn't cross her mind. So she's a shitbag. Then again, I'm kind of offended that she figured the whole thing was fake. Corpse Squirrel has worked too damn hard to be considered a joke. But I want to go to the, get to the bottom of this. I need to find out whose death Tomoe requested. And more importantly, the question of who requested my own death remains unanswered. Tomoe, what's the name of the person you requested to die? Her name? Oh, you might know her. It was that skank from our office. Akane Tsurumaki. Akane Tsurumaki. Sure enough, she's well and truly dead. Tomoe isn't wrong in believing that the website killed Akane. Tomoe once posted on Noise about wanting to try the website, and she was waiting for to find someone to try it out on. If I recall quickly, the request from Akane's death came through Corpse Girl's website shortly after I read that post. Perhaps Tomoe made the request on the very same day. So then, Tomoe was the one responsible. I assume the person who requested Akane's death was someone in our office, but I never figured it would be a junior data entry temp like Tomoe. How did Tomoe even know Akane? I can't see how her, their paths would have crossed in such a large office building. Yo, psycho. You in there? You really know how to talk to people, don't you? I snap out of my thoughts and meet Tomoe's dead-eyed gaze. Your professional opinion? Can a website really kill someone? I'm torn between giving two replies. I could say that I believe the website worked and therefore I helped increase Corpse Girl's credibility, or I could play it safe and make sure I'm not suspected of any involvement. Coward that I am, I decided to play it safe. I was wondering if it was going to give me a choice there. No, absolutely not. A website can't kill someone. Excuse me. Ah, a few. You had me worried there. Yeah, I figured. I guess it's just a coincidence that she died. Do you reckon I'm not guilty of that? Oh, you're absolutely guilty for being a shit really person. Want the bitch dead anyway. I was just mucking around. Yeah, you're not guilty. You're just a shitty person. Please say that. Oh, thank God. That's a real weight off my elbows, you know? Ugh. Mm -hmm. I sure as shit won't mess around with sites like that again, though. I'm gonna play it real straight from now on. I gotta get my life together. I got a man to look after now. Ugh. Right. Well, good luck with that. I need to get home. All I want right now is to get back and figure out who the hell uploaded a photo of me to the website. My mind is reeling and I'm not in the right headspace to listen to Tomoe's drivel on or drivel any longer. I didn't fucking help you. You're a shitty person. I know we ain't always seen eye to eye. You mean ever? Well, nah. That's about it for now. Peace. For a fleeting moment, I managed that she was about to apologize for assaulting me last week. That possibility disappeared from my mind almost as soon as it had, it had yeah. appeared. She waves almost sheepishly and wanders back to the park in the direction that I came from. Did she ever not? She didn't even go to work either. Right. Time to go home. I can't relax until I know who caused my death. If it wasn't Tomoe, then the situation could be a lot more serious than I originally thought. If it wasn't- Yeah, you need to go back to the office and get the picture out. Fuck. If it wasn't because of my petty squabbles with her, then someone really wants me dead. Yeah, she essentially gave out 
that she's Corpse Girl because of the... Oh, I thought those clouds were moving because of that picture. Someone really wants me dead. Who? It was Owie. can't sleep. It must be past 3 a.m. Countless hours have passed since I started trying to figure out who requested my death. I've run through every possible candidate and their potential reasons a thousand times. I've replayed every encounter I've ever had with every person I've ever met, and I'm drawing a blank. I don't know who wants me dead. I'm not so vain to think that everyone likes me. I'm sure a hell of a lot of people don't like me very much at all. But does anyone not like me enough to want me dead? To nominate me for Corpse Girl, for Corpse Girl to claim me as her prey. I take a little solace in the fact that my life isn't actually in danger. Corpse Girl's victims are only brought low by my hand. Though my convictions are strong and I never refuse a request, taking my own life is absolutely out of the question. This is the one and only request I will ever refuse. And it's not for the sake of my own life, but rather for the sake of Corpse Girl's continued existence. I will not let her die and be buried with me. However... Now that I've eaten of the knowledge that somebody genuinely wants me dead, I, can, I can't cure my upset stomach. No amount of mental reassurance will quell the sickness rising inside of me. The top candidates of, of cor are, of course, those closest to me. I've crossed Tomoe off the list. Her relief at knowing Akane Suramaki's death wasn't her fault convinced me that she wouldn't make the mistake of messing with the website twice. Add to the fact that she came to me for a reassurance, well, it's safe to say she's not the person I'm looking for. So that leaves the people I deal with on a daily basis. Aoi Sato, my best friend since junior high, and the first person I ever fell for. She rejected me gracefully during senior high. So gracefully that we still remain friends to this day. Would she want me dead? It's doubtful. She wouldn't even report her stalker, a guy who she is apparently related to, to the police. Because she didn't want him arrested. Then there's Shinya Fujikawa, another acquaintance from school and now my co-worker. He has even gone so far as to call his friends now that we're connected on noise. Didn't she say the picture that she that was sent to the website was from her noise profile? What if it's fucking Koji being angry because I never talked to him about his book? I've never been romantically interested in him, but I was under the false impression that he had feelings for me. He's a, wanna, he's a wannabe detective, but he doesn't have the competence to follow in his father's footsteps. He doesn't strike me as the type to want somebody dead, let alone to go through with requesting somebody's death. Still, quiet guard people like him can really surprise you. When you take those three out of the equation, the people I deal with daily are very few. There are higher ups and execs at works, like Kotomi Ida, but our dealings are so short and simple that I'm sure they barely even register on their radar. If I extend my list of candidates to include people that I don't deal with regularly, but who are technically still a, part of, still a part of my life, then the list gets a little more interesting and harder to narrow down. Kenji and Momo Agawa, the father and daughter living in my apartment building, they're sweet, kind, and considerate. Couldn't imagine they'd want to kill me unless I'm really using up too much of their internet bandwidth that they just can't take it anymore. There's my elder sister, of course, Yuriko Kurosawa. We haven't talked in over a year, at least. She's scum, but probably not the type to randomly elect her own sister for death. Probably. She's on parole, so I have to believe she wouldn't do anything to jeopardize her freedom. And there's... Mother. Asuna Kurosawa. She's simply not in a position to submit my details to Corpse Girl's website. My struggling brain can't think of anyone else currently in my life. I have a very small social circle, it's true. And the people that fill my noise newsfeed have either already been named on this list or are far... From such a small, long ago part of my life, they wouldn't even remember I exist anymore. And then suddenly, without warning, a face pops in my mind with starting clarity. The guy from the library. Kojiro, was it? Kojiro with no surname. He was bizarre. Eccentric. Didn't seem like the type of person that gets outside much. Kind of like me, I suppose. His eyes were so clear, it was unnerving. They say the eyes are the window to the soul, but I couldn't see anything of substance through his lenses. Out of everyone I've mentally listed, he seems like the person most capable of taking someone's life. That's a biased opinion, based on little to no knowledge of him. It's just impression he gives. However, I have to ask myself, what did he want me dead? Me? The person he met one time at the library? In addition, the photo of me that was uploaded to my website was from Temujin's uh, corporate system. 
It's the very same picture that I wear on my ID tag. How would Kojiro have accessed it? Right click photo save. If he was going to upload a photo of my he'd have to find my noise profile and use an image from one of my albums. There aren't too many photos of me out there, but there are enough to identify me. The guy is suspicious, but I don't think he's the one I'm looking for. Yet, I can't get his face out of my mind. On the way, I snatched up my phone from my bedside. That's a grammar error, right? On a whim, I snatch up my phone from my beside me and unlock the screen. Okay, yeah. My brain got locked up there for a minute. The bright light shines like a beacon in the darkness and nearly blinds me, but I squint and na navigate to the noise app. Kojiro. He told, told me his noise tag, didn't he? Koji, Koji. If I can remember it, it'll save me the hassle of having to look through hundreds of profiles with the same name just to find it. What was it? Kojiro? No, too simple. Koji, something. I start to type different variations until an auto-predicted result pops up. Koji Koji, I was right. That's the one! I tap the result and instantly arrive at his profile. The info in his about me section is pretty vague, but judging by the display, display photo, I'm certain this is the right guy. Koji Koji, just your average guy taking my days one day at a time. Introvert, anti-social, anti-establishment, anti-everything, lol. I like peanut butter though. I scroll through his feed and see that he hasn't posted anything for quite some time. His most recent post is from about a year ago, and it's just an updated version of his display picture where he has cropped out a woman's face and body, so the focus is just on him. I open up a direct message to him and start typing. <laughs> no, no, Noriko, I love it. Hey, this is Koji. Hey, is this Kojiro from the library? It's Noriko. Kurosawa. Since it's past 3 a.m., I'm not expecting a reply until I instantly receive a message in response. Hi, late night? You replied so quickly. I swallow and gather the nerve to ask him what's on his mind. What's on my mind? Yeah, I can't sleep. Have you heard of Corpse Girl's website? The screen states that he's currently typing a message, but the notification simply disappears and no message comes through. Is he ignoring me? Then, yes. So how does he know about? So how, he does know about the website. The question is, was he already familiar with it, or did he just look it up after I mentioned it? What are your thoughts? Is it real? Yes, love it. Big fan. I see. Me too. Have you used it? No. Well, no. Not yet. Don't hate anyone enough. It's hard to get a sense of his emotions through his replies. I can't tell if he's being sincere or not. Wait, have you used it? Tell me. Tell me details. Does it work? No, I haven't used it. But it's popular in my office. I don't know why I wrote that. Why I ended the message with a question mark. I shake my head and wait for a, few, a response. Okay. Let me know if you use it. Might be work for me. Might be work for me? What does he mean by that? Work? Yes. I store cadavers. Dispose of later. I don't understand. Oh. He's... Oh boy. Hospital morgue. Storage and disposal. He works at a morgue? I noticed a strange... I noticed a strange smell in his clothes when we met, and now it makes sense. I gag a little and suppress the urge of vomit. So if someone dies, they get sent to you? Even for, like, suicides and murders? Yeah, all sorts. Where's our crash victims? Have to mix and match limbs. Ugh. Have you ever received a victim of Corpse Girl's website? Impossible to know. Maybe? Who can say? Have a name? A name. Can you look up the names of bodies he's received? Can you look up such a thing? Yeah. Cadavers are ID'd, mostly. No victim? Should I ask? Will doing so put me under suspicion of being associated with Corpse Girl? Yeah. Hello? I can look now at work. I start to nervously bite my fingernails. I know that I won't gain anything from finding out if he's dealt with any of the victims, but... Morbid curiosity tends to get the better of me. Sometimes I just have to know. Akane Suramaki. Okay, second. No. Rex Spelling? Got an M Surumaki and Akane and Akane Surumaki. Uh, uh, Surumi. That's not right. Close though. Okay, more names? Aichi Hanada. One sec. Shouldn't he be questioning, like, how I know all these names? Yes. Crash victim. Dad. I remember him. He's still here, actually. I can't believe what I'm reading. 
Aichi Hanada ended up in the Kojiro's morgue. And he's still there? Really? How long do you store bodies? Depends. Up to two days for autopsy. No autopsy for him. No need. So he just sits here. Cold chamber 31 BB. I think he's an FBI agent or something. Family don't collect? And cremation. Is cremation what you mean by disposal? Yeah. Mostly. Friend of yours? Not exactly. But he's corpse girl's victims? But he's corpse girl's victim. You said so. Well, I don't know. You said so. Interesting. I'll look at him again. Really, there's no need for that. It's okay. I won't tell. How did you do it? Oh, fucking... Mm. I swallow hard. What does he mean? Hello? How did I do what? How did you kill him? See? Oh, shit. I've messed up. He knows. Kojiro has figured out who I am. In a panic, I slam my phone down. I can hear the constant vibration against the bed as Kojiro continues to message me. Yeah, in this break you're taking is just proving that you know he knows that you're in a panic. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. What do I do? Can I make something up to convince him that I'm not the one responsible for Aichi's death? Will he even buy it? By not responding to him straight away, I probably inadvertently proven my own guilt. Called it. I pick up my phone between my trembling thumb and forefinger. I hold it delica delicately as though I it has suddenly become some sort of evidence that I don't want to want covered in my fingerprints. In a way, that's completely true. I stare at the messages from Kojiro. Hey. Hey. You there? Hello? Yeah, let's just keep typing over this. I'd better reply. I have to say something. Maybe, just maybe I can throw him off my trail. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't kill anyone. Not exactly a lie. Yes, yeah, true. Corpse Girl killed him. No name entry on Corpse Girl's website. But you knew his name, and you knew he died. Exactly. Ergo, you requested his death. Wait, this is good. This is far better than him believing I'm Corpse Girl. He thinks I'm just some fan of the website that submitted a request. I have to run with this. I can't let him know the actual truth. Yeah. Okay, you got me. I used the website to request his death. Ah! Wow, mad. The site is real. Amazing. This is exciting. Are you happy he's dead? I decided to take a leaf out of Tomoe's book and act more innocent than I really am. Not really. I just made the request on a whim to see what would happen. I didn't think it would really work. Wow. So you didn't hate the guy? Aichi? No. I never even met him. Just found his photo on the internet. That's fucked. Incredible. Corpse girl kills with just a photo. Doesn't even need a name. Uh, you're about to get yourself into a lie loop because he's going to ask how I got the phone number. I wonder how many other bits I've got here. Lol. Have to go. Walking off soon. Talk later. Kojiro's status immediately changes to offline. I breathe a sigh of relief. I think he bought the lie. Surely I'm in the clear. No. Because he's going to ask how you got the phone number. But this whole conversation was an exercise in stupidity. Uh huh? I nearly shot myself in the foot because of my own insatiable curiosity. I shouldn't have connected Kojiro at all. Or contacted Kojiro at all. The only positive thing to come out of this is learning that Kojiro works at a hospital morgue. I could potentially take advantage of this, but my sleep-deprived brain can't work, quite work it out now. Or work out how. Well, I can dwell on that later. For now, I really need to sleep. Also, wasn't June... Like when uh, the first girl died? My alarm erupts with a shriek scream. A shrieking scream and scares me away. My eyes don't open immediately. Instead, I find myself tossing and turning, trying to bury my face in my pillow. I can't... I can't have had more than two hours of sleep, and now it's already time to get up and go to work. How the hell am I going to function today? Lots of coffee. I drag my heavy body from the bed and slide into the pair of slippers resting on the floor. With a yawn and stretch, I leave my bedroom. Fuck, you shrieking yawn. Ugh. That was annoying. I stand in the kitchen, or kitchenette connected to the living room for a few moments, completely absent-minded. I open the refrigerator, re refrigerator and stare blankly at the dis dismal contents. A small tub of peach yogurt sits at the top shelf, and a half-empty jug of oolong tea rests at the bottom. I grab the yogurt and peel off the lid. Without even fetching a spoon, I simply pour a little in my mouth. I do that. I consume about a half of the tiny portion and wipe my mouth before throwing the leftovers in the trash. That will be enough to spike my energy for the morning. When you normally run on an empty stomach, any amount of calories can work as a pick-me-up. 
I make a mental note to collect two or three cans of coffee from the convenience store on my way to work. It should carry me through the rest of the day. The rest of the early morning is spent applying makeup and getting dressed. I'm out of the door at the same time as every other day. To stop myself from nodding off my desk, I decide to rearrange my personal effects. Having something to focus on is a great way to fight off sleep. Unlike the other employees here, I don't tend to keep much at my workspace, yet still manage to feel clustered somehow. Cluttered. Next to my computer monitor are three little figurines that I collected from my toy capsule machines. They're a set of anthropomorphic coffee cans that were released as a promotional campaign for my favorite coffee brand. Each figure is about the size of my thumb. They're cute little things, and when you put a coin into the capsule machine, you never know which character you're going to get. So far, I've managed to collect Captain Cafe a lot, a lot, I don't know how to pronounce these words, Lieutenant Long Black and Madame Macchiato. Ma Macchiato. As I remember correctly, there are two more I still need to get. But the capsule machines seem to be out of rotation now because they've been replaced with a different series of toys. If I ever want to collect the remaining figures, I'll probably need to buy them online. Oh well, I'm not super invested in having to own all of them. I give each tiny figure a bit of dusting and set them back next to my monitor, so they're all standing up straight and facing forward. Satisfied that they're tidy, I look to the small tray of drawers that sit on the other side of my monitor. I mainly just store papers and office memos in them. They're not really big enough to hold anything much larger than documents. I rummage through the drawers and discard a few old notices that aren't relevant anymore. When I'm done, I file away a couple of loose papers that have been fluttering around my desk for the last week. With that complete, I straighten up my keyboard so it's parallel with my mouse pad. I give the keyboard a thorough adjusting and then lean back in my chair to my eye work. The desk looks so much nicer now. A clean workspace invites a clean or clear set of minds so my coworkers would have or so my coworkers would have me believe. Maybe I'll buy into that a little bit now that I can see the effects for myself. The corner of my eyes catch a glimpse of the blonde hair and turn to watch Tomoe enter the office. She nods at Shinya as she walks by his desk and continues nonchalantly toward her own workspace. I didn't. I didn't take the photo out of her desk. Since her desk is in my line of sight, I have the perfect vantage point to watch her put her belongings down and take a seat. I feel a sudden stirring of excitement as she sits down. It's almost as if I'm anticipating something to happen. I don't remember it. Was something supposed to happen with Tomoe today? Have I forgotten something important? My tired mind can't really focus on those thoughts. I tried to ignore the mild, sur mild surge of adrenaline that started pulsing through me when she took her seat. I distract myself by starting at my computer and looking over the list of today's task. It looks as though I need to correct a few entries. I uploaded this... I uploaded... Oh, it looks like I needed to correct a few entries I uploaded to the company's server yesterday. In my previously distracted state, it's possible I made a few ty ty typographical errors. That's fair enough. I'll get to work on correcting the data. I open up a few programs and listen to the whirring of my computer tower, nearly drowned out in the clamor of the office environment. The next sound I hear eclipses the noise of the computer in the office completely and absolutely. She's going to scream. A terrified shriek slices through the air like a knife leaving a deathly, ringing silence in its wake. I scrambles with my feet, purely out of instinct, scanning for the source of the scream. I don't have to look very far before my eyes fall upon distressed Tomoe kneeling on the floor and clutching her face. She's on the ground next to her desk, staring down, unblinkingly, her fingers white from the strain of clawing at her own head. In the sudden chaos of people rushing to her side, I somehow managed to notice that one of the drawers at her desk is wide open. An open drawer? As tired and exhausted as I am, the significance of the open drawer isn't lost on me. I immediately realized why my body subconsciously felt excited when Tomoe came into the office this morning. I left something in her dress drawer, something I wanted her to find. Yesterday's obsession with discovering the identity of the one who requested my death caused me to forget my rebellious strike against Tomoe. I left something in her drawer yesterday thinking she was the one who submitted my photo to the website. Then she didn't come to work and it completely set my mind. After she confessed, to requesting Akane Tsurumaki's death, I erased my suspicion of her being the one who targeted me. But I didn't remove the item from her drawer. I'm in deep, deep shit now. Before I can even lurch forward from behind my desk, Tomei turns his head to face me. Her cold, grim eyes lock onto mine, refusing to let go. A trickle of crimson blood seeps from her scalp, where her fingernails pierce her skin during her panic scream. Swallowing my nervousness, I break eye contact with her and stare down at the flat object that was the focus of her outcry. It's a familiar photograph. I print an image on glossy paper. Traditional, old school, and just as effective as that I 
just as effective. Oh god, I can't we can't words. Just as effective as I would have hoped. So I can't make out all the detail from this distance. The compos composition of the photo doesn't elude my memory. It depicts my very own corpse, toppled backward over a tombstone. A bloody slash traces bloody slash traces across my neck. A laceration lines my stomach and a knife protrudes from my breast. My black hair is tangled in mist. My dark eyeliner smeared and smudged. The grimace on my face is the unmistakable mask of death. Norko Kurosawa, stoic and unflinching in death. Norko Kurosawa, dead atop a random tombstone in some nameless cemetery. A bizarre yet untimely, unremarkable way to die. It suits me perfectly. I'm proud of the work that went into this photo. The object was to punish Tomoe for requesting my death to create a work of art so horrific that she would beg for forgiveness when she found me still breathing. But the scene playing out before me is unlike anything I had imagined. Yeah, she's <laughs> thinking I'm fucking with her for playing with it. Tomoe's face is scrunched up with hatred, the veins in her forehead threatening to burst and shower the office with sanguine gore at any given second. Whether or not she thinks this is some kind of sick prank is beyond my knowledge. All I can decipher from her expression is that she is likely to strangle me given the opportunity. But, per but perhaps I'm jumping ahead of myself. Why do I automatically assume that she believes I'm guilty of putting the photo in her drawer? I mean, aren't I the victim in the image? Perhaps she actually... Who the fuck is responsible for this? She howls like a wounded animal, a battered up and beaten pup backed into a corner. Clutching the photo, now torn from her bloodied fingers, fingernails, she stands and plants her feet firmly in the floor. The floor. Steadfast, stern, resolute. A bulwark of unmovable, or immovable fury. All eyes are upon her. The bleached blonde gal girl, white gal girl, with an antagonizing attitude, is the center of attention in the this office. Photo is disgusting. Absolutely sick. Who made it? From the confused and puzzled faces of the 20 or so employees held around, it's obvious that no one really knows what Tomoe is talking about. The photo is small, and with her clutching it tightly and waving around frantically, it's impossible for anyone to make out the detail. I'm bold enough to assume that no one else has managed to properly glimpse it yet. And maybe I can prevent our coworkers from getting a closer look if I act fast. I down out from behind my desk and approach Tomoe. Tomoe aggressively thrusts the photo toward me. I take a cursory look at it and gasp loudly to add credibility to my acting. Adopting a fake countenance of shock, I grab Tomoe by the shoulder and pull her close to me. I bow my head against hers so we can so we stand intimately in the middle of the crowd. Forehead to forehead, our eyes fixed on one another. I hope my beating heart isn't loud enough for Tomoe to notice as we stand against each other. I whisper softly, my pulse quickening as I try to make my words sound urgent and confident rather than broken and anxious. Come with me. I need to talk to you. Tomoe tenses and stiffens, but she murmurs something that sounds like agreement. I pull away from her and grab her wrist to lead her out of the office. We exit from the throng of onlookers, scratching their heads and dart towards the elevator. Jinya says nothing as we pass him, he just looks on with pale face. The elevator ride down is silent and awkward, but eventually the doors open to reveal the ground floor lobby. We weave between the scattered couches and sculptures, making a frantic dash for the exit. We finally emerge outside into the brisk morning air. Trying hard to catch my breath, I notice that Tomoe isn't nearly as exhausted as I am. I want to chalk up my wheezing condition to a lack of sleep, but I know it's just an excuse for my poor physical fitness. Tomoe is still holding the photo in her hand. She looks at it once more in disgust, then faces me with one hand on her hip. You want to tell me what the fuck this is? It looks like a picture of me dead, bitch. Look, it's difficult to explain, but I'll try my best. I want to find out who planted this in my drawer. And look at this. She thrusts the photo at me once again. She uses the point of her thumb to indicate the timestamp printed at the bottom of the image. It's got yesterday's date on it. A photo of your dead body, as if you've already been killed. But here you stand. Oh. Fair enough. She, so she's angry that I'm not dead. I marked it as such when I was under the belief that Tomoe would find it yesterday morning. I wanted her to anxiously wait out the day until my death accompanied the rising moon. Since that go down, that didn't go down the way I planned, the confusion on Tomoe's face is now self-explanatory. What did she say? Huh? 
This is just like what happened to Akane Surumaki when I requested her death. The police found a photo of her own dead body on her phone when they investigated how she died. What? Is this public knowledge? How did I not know this? Now you've got a similar photo. Does that mean Corpse Girl is trying to kill you? <sighs> but it doesn't make sense. It's already past the time it says here. And why was the photo in my desk drawer? What do I gotta do with it? I'm still reeling from the information about Okane Suramaki. The police discovered the corpse photo on her form, on her phone. Of course they did. Of course they would investigate her death. It's foolish of me to assume the photo wouldn't come to light. Someone who grits her teeth and tenderly touches a finger to her bloody cut on her scalp, the place her fingernails slashed in anguish. She looks at her fingertips in revulsion and sighs. Look, maybe it's my fault that Akane Suramaki ended up down the well. Maybe it's not. The least I can do is make sure that the fucking corpse girl doesn't come to get you as well. You ain't my friend or nothing, but sluts gotta stick it out together, right? Uh. I don't want another cool bitch on my conscience. I feel like these are the most touching words Tomoe can string together. I'm somewhat flattered that she wants to protect me. Tomoe, you don't have to do anything. Yes, I do. I put your name in the stupid website or whatever. Yeah, I kind of do, you know? You comforted me a little when I came to you about the dead skank. Made me feel like I wasn't totally to blame, yeah? <laughs> you might not be as much of a psycho as I thought. Might be a heart beating behind that flat chest. Okay. Thanks. Unexpectedly, the brash and brazen girl beams at me brightly. I'm putting you under 24-hour surveillance. Corpse girl's gonna have to crack my skull open before she goes sticking her fingers into yours. Mm. Tomoe, really, that's not necessary. I really don't want you around me. I can't figure out why a way to convey that I'm not actually in any danger. Well, immediate danger, at any rate. It's true that there is someone out there who wants me dead badly enough to have requested it through the website. But as far as the third of course girl coming to get me goes, I'm perfectly safe. I resign myself to simply staring, staring blankly at Tomoe, the girl I had hold so much disdain for. I know I should choose my next words carefully. Someone who's prone to violent outbursts at even the best of times. I don't need you to perk me. Fuck off. Thanks, but I'll be fine on my own. I feel better with you. Uh, I'll be fine on my own. Thanks, but I'll be fine on my own. Nah, that's bull. You're a delicate little thing. So it's up to me to look after. Oh, God. Seriously, I'll be okay. I don't think Corpse Girl is going to come after me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And what makes you so sure? Uh, it's... A long story. But look, you said it yourself. The time and date on the photo have already passed, right? Hmm. Oh, yeah. I guess so. But so what? Well, I can't imagine someone coming to kill me now. I mean, the corpse in the photo is clearly dead at 9.06 p.m. last night. But I'm standing right in front of you. I'm pretty alive right now. Uh, you're not really convincing me. I mean... I don't totally believe this corpse girl person really exists, but still. Something or other killed Akane Surumaki. Pretty sure it wasn't suicide, what with the photo and all. So, since you got one of them photos too, I think it's best we hang. At least- I don't wanna- Let me keep you safe. No, here. please don't. You're really stubborn, you know that? Oh yeah, but I've been called worse. Mm, please. This is actually a fate worse than death. I'd rather die. My drawer. Did corpse girl get her desk mixed up? And like, shouldn't that have just been texted to you? I... I don't know. I would actually rather die than hang out with you. This shit really fucks with my head. Let's just get back to work, yeah? Uh, yeah, that's gonna be fine. Somebody turns her head back to the building but stops short. She faces me and hands me the Here. photo. Better you have it than me. She enters the office and leaves me standing in the cool morning air. Looking down at the photo, it's pretty clear that it's me in the image. I suppose it would be best to delete this evidence. I shred the photo carefully, making sure to completely destroy any of my defining features in the image. With the photo completely ripped beyond recognition, I toss it in a nearby bin and enter the office building. After dealing with Tomoe, the rest of the day goes by without an incident. I'm thankful mainly due to how exhausted I am from lack of sleep. When I finally get home, I crash on the couch and watch the sun vanish from the sky. Koji's gonna message me. It's late, but I can still make the most of the night if I pull myself up from the couch. 
With great effort, I manage to stand and then make my way to the kitchen to brew a cup of tea. In my mind, I run through a list of things I should be doing my free time tonight. I could check my website requests, take a bath, or maybe get back to re reading Strange Flower. Whatever I end up doing, I'm just relieved the day is over. With a steaming cup of green tea in hand, I retreat to my room and leave the outside world to continue turning without me. Another dull morning in the office. The chatter of people talking on the phone, the humming of the air conditioner, tapping of my fingers against keyboards. If I didn't have music to drown out the whole white noise, I'd probably go mad from being exposed to it every day. I don't know how everyone else deals with it. Thanks to a good night's rest, I've been able to work diligently so far. I've completed a few tasks already, but there's still a lot more work to do. As I continue to pulverize my keyboard with thin, brittle fingers, I look over the... I look out over the office floor to see who is around. Virginia sits at his desk, his expression scrunched up in concentration, and his absent mind at least and he absent mind absent mindedly scratches his face with the blunt end of a pen. Turning my gaze, I observe the back of Tomoe's head as she works attentively at her computer. She hasn't said anything to me since we arrived at the office this morning. Because now I know that she's not the one who requests my death, I feel more at ease around her. And with the photo of my own corpse destroyed, I can put yesterday's unplanned events behind me. I need to be more careful in the future. Forgetting that I planted a photo like that in Tomoe's desk drawer was an oversight I can't afford to repeat. I need to be clever, calculated, cunning. Corpse Girl's ambitions require me to be at peak performance at all times. I can't go messing up like that again. I'm lucky that no one else was dragged into the whole mess. Imagine if I did something so stupid when trying to kill a real victim. I would have ruined the entire operation. Take a deep breath. Breath, I clap my cheeks softly with both hands. From now on, I'm going to truly focus when carrying out my plans. All I need to do is wait for the next victim to come through the website. I'm ready for it. Finding out the identity for whoever requests my own death shouldn't be my top priority. I'm immune to Corpse Girl's wrath, of course, so unless someone decides to come at me with a knife, I'm perfectly safe. I'll check the website request this evening as soon as I get home. It's too risky to try and access it while at work. With newfound resolve, I nod to myself and look ahead to the end of the day. A flickering notification on my laptop screen prompts a wicked grin to split my face in two. One new request. I don't waste any time before opening up the details of the request. My heart begins to pound and I feel the welcome rush of adrenaline flowing through my body. Watch, it's going to be me again. I don't think I know any of them. My eyes widen at the sight of the uploaded photo. Twins? Two people. Two identical women. Twins? Identical twins at that. The woman on the left is circled in red. She is obviously the request victim, but without knowing them personally, it's impossible to distinguish between the two. They both have the same stunning features, lustrous hair, and contagious smiles. Truly an interesting request. I immediately jump to the conclusion that one twin wants the other dead. That's not the only possibility, but I think it's the case. It makes it exciting. This type of request only serves to reinforce my resolve. I can't wait to start gouging out the victim's eyes. She will leave behind a truly beautiful corpse. Eesh. As I wait for my secret weapon, the database of the deceased to load up my phone tingles beside me on the couch. Koji. It's a noise message from none other than Kojiro. Are you there? About last time. Hi. Hey, that guy, Aichi Hanada? Gone today. Is that so? Where did he go? Cremated. Family didn't collect him. Limited space, you know how it is. I don't quite know why deci Kojiro decided to tell me this. I suppose he still, still thinks I requested Aichi's death, so... I see. More names? What? Want me to look up more names? Corpse Girl's victims. Sorry, I don't have any more names for you. Shame. Tell me if you request more deaths. Oh. And... Do you know her identity? Who, Corpse Girl? Yeah. No, sorry, I don't know who she is. Okay. Is it you? Jeez, are we back at... To this again? No, it's not me. I'm not as clever as all that. The fact that... Uh, you put the clever word in there shows that you have some sort of uh, respect or admiration for them, so that would immediately make you a, a suspect. How does she kill? I'm not sure. Okay. What do you know, lol? 
All I know is that the victims receive a photo of their own corpse before they die. Everyone knows that. My dog knows that. It's her calling card. You had a request fulfilled. Tell me more. I don't know what else to tell you. Lame. Okay. By the way, I saw the photo. What photo? Aichi Hanada. Photo on his phone. The calling card. Huh? How did Koji Kojiro see it? Sure, he's, he deals with dead bodies, but surely personal possessions are removed from the deceased before they enter the morgue. I need to play it cool here. I need to play it cool here and not invite any more suspicion of myself. You're talking about the photo that Corpse Girl supposedly sends her victims? Yeah. Funny thing, it was definitely the guy. The photo didn't match cause of death. The photo didn't match the cause of death. I remember crafting Aichi Hanada's photo, of course. It wasn't all that long ago. I used the base... I used a base image of a corpse with dismembered legs hanging over a power line. It was a me memorable image, after all. It made a fearsome sight, but it's not something that could easily be... That could be easily replicated by suicide. Or by murder, for that matter. So I never really expected Aichi to wind up looking like that photo. From what I read in the obituary, he died in a traffic accident. He must have been driving, or he was a pedestrian either... Or was a pedestrian. Either way... It was likely a collision with a vehicle. For starters, cadaver still has both legs. No legs in the photo. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. I haven't seen the photo you're talking about. You haven't? Interesting. So Corpse Girl doesn't share with the requester. Hang on. Okay. So only the victim sees the photo. Here. Yeesh. Kojiro shows the photo in the chat. You saved it? Sure enough, it's a snapshot of the corpse photo I produced for Aichi Hanada. Someone else has your evidence now. He must have copied it from the victim's phone. The photo from Corpse, the photo from corpse Girl. Compared to this. Another photo is shared in the chat. This one I haven't seen before. It's Aichi Hanada's true corpse sprawled forward in the driver's seat of a wrecked car. Seeing a genuine corpse photo doesn't come as much of a surprise to me. After all, I've spent countless hours crawling through the database of the deceased. I've seen more than my fair of destroyed lives. There's not too much blood in this photo. It's kind of lame compared to the go gorgeous renditions of his death that I lovingly crafted. It's still not entirely evident that what led to Aichi's car collision. This very well could have been a genuine accident. His face is turned away. This literally could just be a setup from like the police. For my own ego, I have to at least pretend the corpse girl had a hand in it. Thoughts? The real death doesn't match Corpse Girl's photo at all. Why do you think that is? I feel pretty clever and manipulative by putting the question on Kojiro. I want to listen to the suspicion of my true involvement as much as I can possible. You're asking me? Well, some theories. Corpse Girl's photo is a scare tactic, nothing more. But don't know where photo comes from. She convinces the victim to kill himself. What the hell? How could his very first theory be right on the money? Just who is this guy? Is he stalking me or something? Does he actually know the truth? Second theory. Corpse Girl comes after victims. But a genuine accident happened first. Aichi Hanada died before she got to him. The second theory is off the mark, but I can see why he came to that conclusion. Regardless, this is the theory I want him to believe. I think the second theory is most likely- See, dude, you're- Just giving away your information. Why would someone kill themselves from seeing a photo? Doubting my own methods, like this leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Not that simple. Photo is personal. Time stamped. Abs urgency. Realism. Could be effective, especially in someone anxious or gullible. Or suspicious. He's right, of course. Although causing death is in this manner was never my intention when I first started Corpse Girl's website, it's a possibility that did occur to me when Ruri Hotano died. Wait a minute. How did you even get these two photos? Lol. Now she asks. At least on the scene like to share. More morbid the better. Dead guy's corpse photo on his phone fits the bill. He sent me both photos. We played spot the difference, lol. Disgusting. I never knew police would be so disrespectful to the dead. Really? Really? We're gonna say that? Fucking Well, I can't really talk. There it goes. At the very least, I'm not in that line of work. Anyway. Coffee? Huh? Get coffee with me. Yin. Unbelievable. This guy wants to make up a and grab coffee? Has this conversation really given him the feeling that I am interested in him? Does he think we bonded over discussion of dead bodies? I'm about to tell him no, but some part of me hesitates and halts my fingers. Kojiro has connections. 
more to police? It's not inconceiv inconceivable that he might be a useful tool in the future. At this stage, I'm about 80% sure he doesn't know my true identity. It might be safe to meet up with him. On the other hand, I get the impression that even if I knew he knew who I really am, he'd only be impressed. It's a gamble. It could be beneficial or could lead me to being caught out. It might even get me arrested for my involvement in three deaths. Though, is what I'm doing really illegal? I'm not so sure. But I don't think a jury would take my side. That's why I have to err on the side of caution at all times. Ojiro. Okay, let's meet. I type the words and hit sent before I have any more second thoughts. It might be a fatal mistake. But if I'm clever enough, I can wrap him around my finger and utilize his connections. Think awful highly of yourself. Cool. Message you tomorrow. Bye. Kojiro's status immediately changes offline. I rest my phone on the couch and look back to the laptop screen in front of me. The smiling, beautiful faces of two identical women just stare back at me. See, this could be just the police setting her up to be like, hey, how does it work with two people with the same face? That's right. I was about to start working on the most interesting request. Very much like Death Note. I still have plenty of time before I need to get sleep. With this thought in mind, I set about my task in high spirits. The tiny balcony jutting out from the side of the, my apartment is nothing like it was advertised in the real estate listing. When I first saw the misleading photos, I thought it would be spacious and bright an open-air hideaway that I could use to get some fresh air and improve my health. I wanted to set up a tiny garden and grow some plants. Nothing that would require a lot of work, but something that could occupy my spare time. In reality, the balcony is a depressing amalgamation of steel and concrete that saps away any desire to stand upon it. It rests in the eternal shadow of the surrounding buildings and manages to catch the sun's rays for about four minutes each day. It's an understatement to say I was disappointed when I ventured out upon it for the first time. I suppose, if nothing else, it's a good vantage point for looking out over the city. That's the only positive thing I have to say about it. As I stand here with my back against the railing, calmly skipping a lukewarm mug of green tea, I breathe a heavy sigh. I should be at the office. I should be tapping away at my keyboard, getting through the backlog of work that has accumu accum accumulated this week. Jeez. Instead, I'm here at home, tired and strained and weary, wearing thin at the seams. I call in sick this morning. I don't know if my supervisor bought the line, but he did tell me to stay home and feel better. So that's what I've been trying to do. It's my own fault I feel this way. It's my own fault that I stayed up until 4 a.m. again. I know that a lack of sleep exacerbates my condition. I know that skipping meals and refusing to take medication makes me feel this way. I know that I do this to myself. I know, I know, I know, I know. But this is me. This is what I do to myself as I try to take on each day. This is the way I stretch myself thin. For no reason other than because some days I don't want to be better. I just want to be. I want to stay up late and work on Corpse Girl's requests. My body's need for sleep doesn't come before my ambitions. I want to eat only when necessary because I'm slim, I look beautiful. Because when I'm slim, I look beautiful. I want to be beautiful just like her. I want to skip my medication because taking the same pills every day is a hassle and expensive and I question whether I really need them anymore. Ding! If I can just stay home, stay at home like this, I don't need the medication. I even came out to the balcony, and that counts as being outside. So why, so why do I need to take the pills? It's true that when I skip a few days, I end up like this. I try to convince myself that I'm fine, and that I'm fixed, like I was some broken thing that has been magically repaired. But I end up staying inside all day, with the curtains shut and my eyes locked on the screen. I know that when I stay on top of my medication, I can go to work, and to the park and the library without a second thought. I can get on the train and not worry about strangers breathing on me or touching me. I can go to the convenience store and leisurely look around. I even went to that restaurant last week and read a book while eating dinner. And no one even tried to cut me or abduct me. And no one tried to strangle themselves in front of me in Yuriko. Can I really only go out and do these normal things because of some tiny pills the doctor said I need? Or can I do these things because, I actually, because I'm actually better now? Maybe I was never unwe unwell in the first place. Not irrational, just cautious, careful, concerned. I realize that my mud mug is empty when I bring it to my lips and taste nothing but the slightly waxy, unpleasant sensation of smudged lipstick. Ew. Well, I've been outside for long enough anyway. I'll go inside since it's getting late. Plus, I have the feeling that someone on the street below has been watching me and is waiting to climb up 
onto my balcony. She has some paranoia, I guess. I enter my apartment, set the mug aside, and retreat into my bedroom. My phone is where I left it, sitting face up and begging for my undivided attention. I snatch it up, unlocking the screen, I'm greeted with the last webpage I left open. It's my custom-made news alert for obituaries. From tomorrow morning, I'll be anxiously awaiting news of my latest victim's fate. I, I timestamp the photo with tomorrow's date, June 5th, 9.01am. The unlucky twin has already received the photo. I sent it out earlier today. After sending a photo, I always hide the burner phone out in the unused shed behind my apartment building. Getting the phone in the shed this morning was rather difficult. I had to cover up my face and hands with some old clothes, I weighed, clothes and I waited until nobody was in sight before dashing as fast as I could. It took me a good 10 minutes to collect myself inside the shed before I could rush back to the, my apartment and lock the door behind me. Did she have agoraphobia? I don't think anyone tried to follow me. However, I know that I'm not... I'm going to need to retrieve the phone again tomorrow and dispose of it. I'll check for a reply from the victim, of course. Not that they ever reply. Then I'll destroy the sim and discard the phone like I always do. It might be difficult to get out there to the shed again. On top of that, I really should go to the office. Oh, and then there's one more thing I'm supposed to do tomorrow. Kojira wants to meet for coffee. I'm not so deluded to think that I can pull off all those escapades tomorrow in my current state. I resign myself to reaching out for the bottle of medication on my dresser. Maybe another week of taking these pills won't be so bad. They tend to increase my appetite, which is really annoying. It's a constant struggle to try and ignore the hunger that tears at my stomach. And it doesn't help that they wreak havoc on my libido. I never know what to expect. Sometimes I can look at those photos of Aoi on my phone and feel absolutely nothing. Other times I can simply be scrolling through noise while standing on the train and feel an overwhelming urge to explode. I do my best to dismiss my doubts and fears as I swallow two of the tiny tablets. I follow up with a sip of water from the bottle kept next to my bed. And I fight the urge to retch. I'll take a shower to freshen up. After that, I should curl up in bed and read. I need to conserve my strength for tomorrow, so an early night is in order. Maybe tomorrow's the day I'll finally be better. Where the hell were you yesterday? Did you miss me? Nah, just glad you haven't bit the dust yet. That's so sweet. Someone leans in close to me. Almost uncomfortably so. Listen, have you had any trouble with Corpse Girl? Nope. I think I'm in the clear. Hmm. Well, I guess the time marked on the photo has long passed. Maybe you really are safe. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, though. Huh? Thanks for what? For thinking of me. Ah, shut up. Someone's face is glowing red with embarrassment. Despite our differences, our interactions regarding Corpse Girl have helped us bond a little. I'm not counting on Tomi and I having a lasting friendship. Even just a quiet peace might be expecting too much. I think it's in Tomi's nature to want to pick fights with people, regardless of whether she's close to them or not. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up quarreling again, no matter how much we learn to respect each other. I'm at my desk if you need me, but don't bother me, you know? She waves and leaves the cryptic statement in the air behind her. I return my attention to my computer and mark a few tasks on my list as completed. The next person to waddle up to my desk and interfere with my work is Shinya. You weren't in yesterday? Nope. Are you well? Yep. Okay. Um, I've been meaning to speak to you about Sato. Aoi? Yes, um, the thing is, I'm kind of in deep water because of her not showing up to work. And then resigning immediately. Oh, what if it was him? What if he requested my death because of Owie not showing up? Uh, shit. I was supposed to talk to you about that, actually. It kind of slipped my mind. Oh, right. I'm sorry, Shinya. It's my fault, really. I hassled you to get Owie a job. No, no. I didn't exercise due diligence. I really should have made her come in for an interview. Or I should have spoken to her myself to see if her heart was really in it. Hmm. When you put it that way... I'm not trying to be callous, but what he said makes sense. Listen, you couldn't have known it, but Howie struggles a bit day to day. I'll just say she has some anxiety issues and leave it at that. Anxiety, huh? Don't tell anyone I said that. I was under the impression she's been doing a lot better, but maybe I was wrong. 
I guess we all have our hidden struggles, right? Right. If only he knew. Then again, maybe Shinya struggles too. Maybe doing, dating Tomoe is his cry for help. Maybe he's going to snap one day and come into the office with a knife. Or maybe he'll discover Corpse Girl's website and request Ko Kotomi Ida's death in retaliation for ending his career. Who knows? I can't read this guy as well as I initially thought. For the longest time, I was under the impression he had a crush on me. So what would I know? Anyway, I hope Sato feels better soon. Maybe she'll find a job that suits her one day. Maybe. Uh, say, seeing as we're friends now and all, would you mind if I ask you a, uh, personal question? That depends on what it is. It's related to, uh, Intercourse? Oh, why are you asking me that, bro? My face crushes up at the word. I don't like the direction this conversation is heading in at all. Uh, shouldn't this be something you talk to your girlfriend about? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, you're right. Why? But I can't actually speak to her about it. Oh, uh, this is about to get a very awkward and uncomfortable. One sex ed, please! Or he's a virgin and he's nervous. Really the only other friend I have, so... Shinya's face takes a dark expression that's far more depressing than what he just said. I feel bad for the guy. Um, yeah, I'll get to decide if I'm gonna question. answer. Oh, uh, if oh shit, speaking, man! If someone pressures you into, uh, you know... Sex? His face turns red in an instant. That. Oh man, this fucking sucks. This poor guy. If someone pressures you into it and you really don't want to do it, what should you do? Say no, firmly and loudly. No one should make you do things you don't want to do. Yes. Uh, of course. I feel that my answer didn't give Shinya the comfort he obviously seeking. Is Tomoe pressuring you into going all the way? No, uh, of course not. She would never. I. Never mind. It was foolish of me to bring up this topic. I want to give him a hug. I'm really sorry, Noriko. Please, forgive my lack of professionalism. Shinya bows to me deeply, his face parallel to the floor. He, qu he quickly turns and scuttles away before I get a chance to say anything else. What was all that about? Tomoe be pressuring him? I wouldn't put it past her, but something doesn't feel right. She seems really smitten with him. Why would she really push him like that? Maybe it's guilt for not being able to prevent his career going down the toilet. But I feel like I should try and do something to help him. I wish Shinya get on the elevator, and once the double doors close, I get up from my desk, scoot over to Tomoe's workstation. Hey, can I have a minute? Huh? This is weird. Normally, I come to bother Yo. Yeah, sorry. Um, have you and Shinya ever gone all the way? Huh? We've only been together for what a week? You think I'm some sort of slut? Hey, don't answer that! Look, not that it's your business, but... No, we haven't. Shinya's sweet. He's old-fashioned, you know. He wants to really get to know me before we go down that road. And I'm happy to wait. The last few guys I dated only ever wanted one thing from me. And that gets old real fast, you know? Hmm. Okay, I believe you. Why are you asking me anyway? Did Shinya say something to you? No, I was curious, that's all. <laughs> you think we're real friendly now, don't you? Well, I don't mind some. No, I don't want it. I don't want to. I don't want to do the girl talk. Please. Come talk to me anytime. No, no thanks. Thank you. Okay. I'll do that. Sweet. She didn't try to share stories. Tomoe waggles her fingers in a goodbye wave, and I return to my desk. If I t take Tomoe at her word, which I find myself doing increasingly often, she's. And she's not trying to get Shinya to do anything he's uncomfortable with. Yeah, she's kind of bluntly honest. 
So that can only mean one thing. Someone else is pressuring Shinya. The guy admitted to me only today that his only friend are Tomoe and myself, so... Who was he talking about when he brought up the subject? Fuck! This game got heavy. I'm a little worried that I haven't received news alert for an obituary today. Is this a new photo? I don't recognize this. This diner is cute. Little coffee shop. I this victim that that twin woman had her photo timestamp sent to 901 this morning. Man, my alert's gonna go off during our little coffee thing and then it's just gonna confirm. I'm not very smart. If my method works like it has the last few times, then she should be well and truly dead by now. She should have slit her own throat or some someone mysterious should have come along and slid it for her. It's not like I've managed to identify how a corpse girl's power works. I'm no closer to figuring that out why her victims die. All I know is that they do die. And yet, I can't find any matching obituaries for the day. I've tried searching manually too. I can't always rely on my automatic filters to get it right. I've scoured over every source I can find and have come up with this. Up with nothing. It's possible that she hasn't killed herself yet. It's possible that she's planning to do it. Or maybe someone else is still plotting to kill her on Corpse Girl's behalf. It's also possible that this time my victim won't die. Depressingly, that puts me back at square one. My winning streak will be over before it really begins if the corpse photo has no effect. I make a mental note to discard the burner phone when I get home. I somehow forgot to get rid of it on my way to work, being so absorbed in my strict morning routine. But it's not too late. Barely 24 hours have passed since I sent out the photo. I'm not straying too far from my modus operandi. Yo, you came. Mad. That familiar halting voice snaps me out of my thoughts. Kojiro stands before me, wearing slightly cleaner clothes than the last time we met. It's very possible that he interrupted this meetup as a date and decided to wear his absolute best outfit. The smell of, his, of the morgue is only faint upon him, thanks to the desperate cover-up scent of strong cologne. Hi. Can I sit? Please. Kojiro pulls up a chair and sits across from me. He's relaxed and awkward all at once. His tall, linking form doesn't really seem to fit in with the tiny, cozy cafe he selected as our meeting point. Waiting long? No, not really. Great. Ordered yet? No. What do you recommend? House blend. Fantastic. They roast it here. Also, the chocolate gateau is amazing. What if it's uh, Ida? Messing with uh, Shinya. Because she went a little too hard on him for punishment, right? So what if she's using that against him? Also, the, oh yeah, he's... I'll order two slices. Thank you, but I'm not hungry. Coffee is fine. Roger that. The waitress eventually comes around and Kojiro places our order in fluent French. I think the, I think the waitress is taken aback as she bows politely and humbly asks him to repeat himself in Japanese. Once her order is settled, Kojiro leans forward and looks into my eyes. You wear glasses? I subconsciously reach a hand to my face and check if I am indeed wearing glasses. Of course I'm not. No? Why would you say that? Kojiro leans back casually and shrugs. Remember. Maybe you had them on last time. Last time? Is he referring to when we met at the library? I've never worn glasses. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Just make a conversation. This place is great, right? It's true that the cafe possesses a quiet, comfortable atmosphere. The smell of freshly roasted coffee lingers in the air, and the display of various cakes at the front counter doesn't make me ill. I can make out the faint sound of acoustic music in the background, with vocals in what I presume to be French. All in all, it's a nice place. Kajiro chose oh, well. Uh, is this place expensive? I just don't have much money, that's all. Don't worry, it's on me. How's work? The bank, right? I cock my head to the side. Did I ever tell him what I do for work? I don't recall saying anything on the subject. Um, I work at the head office for Temujin. Not in an actual bank. Not so. Huh. Read your profile wrong. I relax somewhat at his explanation. Of course he would have read my noise profile before meeting up with me. That's pretty normal. I don't keep much personal information on there, but it's true that my workplace is listed. Our conversation is put on hold as the waitress returns with two cups of coffee and a single slice of chocolate gelato or gato. The cake is delicate and moist and my stomach growls in betrayal of my convictions. Kujiro thanks the waitress in French and she once again bows in embarrassment and takes her leave. He scoops up a section of the cake with his fork and holds it out to me. I wave a hand politely and shake my head. Oh, well. He 
takes a bite and looks immensely satisfied with his choice of dessert. Eat if you wanted. Your skin and bones. Excuse me? Just saying. Could stand to gain some weight. The nerve of him. Who would say that to a young woman? I'll have you know that I eat perfectly well. Think... Whoa. Sorry. Wasn't trying to be mean. You're gorgeous. Just saying. Some cake wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I'm gorgeous? I feel a little flush and I look down on my phone to avoid Kujira's warm gaze. Coffee, please. I reach for the cup in front of me, more due to the pleasant aroma than Kujira's suggestion. I take a sip. It's been served at the perfect drinking temperature and it's absolutely delightful. Rich, delicate. I could drink this all day. I've probably been wasting my time drinking canned coffee. This is the real nice. deal. For the first time since Kujira arrived, I smile. It's wonderful. Right? I like your smile. This guy's really laying it on thick. He didn't come here to be swooned. Still, the praise is kind of nice, even if he's just trying to play me with the oldest lines of the book. I figure I should switch the subject to encourage him to stop flirting. So, how long have you worked in the moor? Hmm, wow. Good question. Okay, let's see. I'm 34 now. Started there at 22. Jeez. Damn, 12 years. Ah, never thought about it. Shit, I'm old. No, not at all. You're older than I expected, but really, it's no big deal. How old are you? Can I ask that? I don't mind. I'm 20. Phew. Okay. Right. Is that an issue? No, of course not. You're mature for your age. Or I'm out of touch. You're out of touch. Any older dudes that say you're mature for your age to younger women? Is a huge red flag. I can't help but giggle. Oh, giggle. Okay. He laughs it off, but I wonder if I did hit a nerve. Would you date an older guy? Dude, I'm freaking me out. And there it is, straight to the point. How do I answer a question like that? Good question. I've got no issue with age, but I don't really know if you're. Now he's gonna be like, I didn't mean me. And if I can be honest, there is someone I have feelings for already. And so, unrequited love, huh? Something like that. Hmm. Rob's can't compete with that. Well, that's okay. You're stunning. Out of my league. Thrilled to be friends, if nothing else. Friends sounds nice. Mad. He raises coffee and toast, then takes a sip. Maybe I had him wrong. He might be a bit more mature than I gave him credit for. If he can, if he can take rejection without pressing the point, that speaks a lot about his character. So, corpse girl. Hmm? Interesting, right? How does she do it? The photos, the killings, all without knowing the Vic's name. <laughs> yeah. Wonder what her death count is. Three, four if I'm lucky. I try not, not to say this out loud. Eiji Hanada. Car crash. Was it planned? Cut the brake line. Drugged. You work in the morgue. Wouldn't you guys have done an autopsy? Sorry. Although he said he they didn't. Unrequited love sucks, dude. Feels. Uh, but you requested his death. Uh, yes. I did leave, lead him to believe that. I'll have to continue to go along with it. For no personal reason? That's right. Brutal. Don't request my death, okay? <laughs> we'll see. His face lights up, almost like he's impressed with the ambiguous answer. Excited, even. Maybe I should try the site. Request a death. Know anyone who deserves it? Sorry, not off the top of my head. Hmm. Me neither. Maybe you should request me. I'm dying to know how it goes down. You know, maybe you shouldn't mess with this stuff. What if you really ended up dead? Eh. I can eh. do it myself. <laughs> I mainly want a corpse photo. How does she do it? Oh, by the way, you read that book I gave you? You mean Strange Flower? Still working on it. Bingo. I'm halfway through it. Wow, fair effort. It's long. Thoughts? Hmm, it's interesting. I won't lie. Now, Bell Sinclair is a sicko, right? Right. He's not all there. Halfway through, huh? 
So? Has he dined with the dead? Yeah. Who was it? Mm, his school teacher, I think. He dug up her body two days after she died, and then dressed her in his- Oh, dude, that's fucking- mm. <laughs> Yeah. Took the corpse out for Italian? <laughs> I can imagine the waiter's reaction. Ah, classic. Classic! You know what that word means? Rogero seems to really enjoy reminiscing about the book. The story is definitely interesting, but the way he's laughing at it makes me a little worried. Then again, the guy works in a morgue, so maybe the whole scenario is just comical to him. Oh, that's it there. It takes me a second to realize what he's pointing at. Sure enough, the book in question is sticking out the top of my back. Pass it here. I want to show you a funny passage. You haven't memorized? I nod and reach for the book. I pulled a massive tome from my handbag with a fair amount of effort. The book comes free, but it snags on the bag zipper and causes some of the contents to fly out. A few personal belongings fall to the floor with a clatter. I notice my lip slip, lip gloss, notepad, a pen hit the, and a pen hit the cafe's tiled floor. Pujo comes around my side of the table and helps pick up my things. He pauses when his hand grapple with another book that has fallen underneath. A strange flower. Oh, it's photography. Oh shit. Huh? What's this? I quickly reach for the for the book and try to snatch it from his grasp. It's nothing. Jiro's quick, and he instinctively avoids my desperate grab. He holds the book aloft and continues reading the cover. English? A comprehensive history of photo manipulation. Oh boy. He returns to his seat and flips through the pages as I finish as I finish packing my belongings away. I bow my head silently, waiting for his judgment. No. You can read this? Only a little. Oh, this is tough. My English isn't good. Thought it was French at first. Oh. These images. Kojiro suddenly snaps the book closed and looks at me. I figured it out. I brace myself for his ine inevitable accusation. This girl fakes the photos. The photos aren't from the future. Like that was ever possible. Photo is fake. Timestamp is fake. He's correct. But will he go back to assuming that I'm Corpse Girl? Hey, why do you have this book? Um. Are you editing photos? I mean, I have an interest in it, but oh boy. that's all. Hmm. This book is old. Doubt the techniques are useful anymore. Still, it's interesting. My theory. Thoughts. About Corpse Girl faking the photos? Bingo. I don't know. Sure, it's possible. But can anyone fake a photo so realistically? Realistically? Do you yeah. Know photos are realistic. <clears throat> I knew it. I knew it. Thinking quickly, I snapped back with an answer. You sent me that copy of A.G. Yeah, that's, that's just Corpse one. Girl. The one Corpse Girl apparently produced. True. It was good, right? Pretty convincing. Very convincing. Is photo manipulation that good? I convinced this guy's a cop or a detective. I suppose if someone skilled enough was doing it. If it's not photo manipulation, then one more theory. What is it? Maybe the subject in the photo is a corpse. Mm. I'm confused. Of course it's a corpse. What's your point? Sorry, uh, hear me out. Mm. It's a photo of a real corpse. Just not the victim's corpse. Corpse girl acquires a real corpse, dresses it up, just like in Strange Flower. She makes it look like the Vic. It's convincing because it's real. No photo manipulation. Huh, I see. Immediately, my mind starts to kick into high gear. Kojiro has unknowingly presented me with an unprecedented, unprecedented idea. What if Corpse Girl does get real corpses? What if she dresses them up, wounds them, makes them look like carbon copy of the victim? Why was copy red? Then she holds a photography session to capture the magic. The realism will be amazing. It will be way more convincing than manipulating a photo, even though I'm pretty, I've am i become pretty good at that. It will be the next step up in realism. I'm sure to convince victims to kill themselves. It's sure to convince victims to kill themselves. If Corpse Squirrel's victims can be relied upon to kill themselves, then I don't have to continually question the cause of death. I wouldn't need to worry about whether some mysterious third party is wandering around slaying people on Corpse Squirrel's behalf. All the deaths would be caused by suicide. It would be predictable. Conquering victims would simply be a matter of forgiving or forging a convincing enough corpse replica. But 
The legwork involved in acquiring corpses would be... That's it. The answer is sitting right in front of me. With a smudge of chocolate cake on his chin and an empty coffee cup resting in his hands. Say, hypothetically, would it be easy for Corpse Girl to even have access to dead bodies? Legal ramifications aside, could she You're an idiot. Have cadavers to desecrate at will? You literally just told him. Yeah, it's not impossible. Take someone like me. I have the morgue. I'm there alone, mostly. Someone like Corpse Girl makes me an offer. I'd give away See. spare corpses, no problem. See? He's on board. Oh, God. Of course, I could get busted. It's not about losing my job. I'm not going to prison. The price would have to be right. Yep, see. But that's just me. Employees in other morgues, well, can't speak for them. Interesting. Oh, God. So you would willingly work with Corpse Girl if the price was... Oh, right? God. This is a Death Note all over again. Yeah, I've said it before. Big fan. I support her work. It's fascinating. Her ego just can't take it. If she really is using cadavers to make photos, then, well, I'm offended she didn't come to me for help. <laughs> this is amazing. I've never imagined this meeting could be so lucrative. If I want to get my hands on all the corpses I've ever, I'll ever need, I can just ask him here and now. I find myself breathing heavily, and I notice my cheeks are warm and my head feels slightly airy. It all comes down to whether or not I really want to step up my game. The way things are, well. Twin woman, my latest victim, doesn't seem to have given up the ghost. Maybe I'm being impatient, or maybe my work just isn't as convincing and powerful as I want it to be. Then there are the cases of the previous victims. Akane Suramaki killed herself, there's no doubt about it. But Aichi Hanada? It's highly possible the car wreck truly was accidental. I may not have had a hand in that after all. Rui Hatana was my first, my first conquest. The cause of her death still eludes me. There's no way she could have killed herself in the position her body was discovered in. She's the whole reason I started suspecting someone else's involvement in the first place, after all. So there's one definite suicide, one potential murder, and one death that was an accident. A traffic collision that happened to be coincide with the date I wanted the victim to die. Statistically, there's no way to know how Corpse Girl's power actually works. It's almost like deaths are just caused at random. And when you pile on the countless failures I've encountered over the past year, well, my success ratio isn't very impressive. If I could truly compel victims to simply kill themselves, then it would take the guesswork out of the whole thing. That's for sure. That It's always like, she's always like, yeah, core school's power, the power, the power, power. Well, if your ratio is like 400 to one, maybe you don't quite have the power and just be like, yeah, it's fucking random. With Kojiro's help, but her ego's getting in the way. I could acquire, why am I justifying a slightly like an insane murderer? fetish person. I could acquire cadavers and make them look like my victims. The work would be completely different to photo manipulation. There will be gore involved, no doubt about it, and it'll take steady hand. Some make of artistry and access to clothing props. Yeah, that, uh, that means you're gonna have to cut stuff. People, yeah, uh, mm. Then there's lighting to consider and backdrops. It's one thing to take an image from a database of the deceased and have a corpse splattered on the pavement, ready to go. It's an entirely different thing to have a to have to drag a body out of a morgue and plant it in position, then take photos of it. Yeah. There will be a lot to consider, to consider here. It's not a decision I can make lightly. And on top of that, I don't have the courage right now to ask a deal straight up for his help. That's that's also just adding another fail point. Two people know. But if I do go for it, I'm absolutely positive we'll land a bass about a credibility to Corpse Squirrel's mission. The extraordinary realism will pave the road ahead of me with blood. Finished your coffee? Uh, oh. I quickly take a sip and drain the cup. That was delicious. Thank you for treating me. Very welcome. Shall we head off? Yes, let's. Any plans for the night? Yes. Sorry I can't hang out longer. No problem. I had fun. Cordero stands up and conjures his wallet. He leaves a few bills on the table and steps toward me. I stand up too, playing my best hand. I quickly lean forward and plant a soft kiss on his cheek. The maneuver is surprisingly difficult thanks to his height, and I don't think I can pull it off as gracefully as I had planned. Thank you for the date. Will I see you again? Mm. You're just telling him your corpse scroll at this point. A complete flip-flop in fortunality. 
I gave my best alluring look as I bat my eyelids gently. Y yeah, of course. He slowly rubs his cheek with tender fingers, amazed that I just kissed him. Bye bye now. You just said that you loved someone else. I spin and make a beeline for the exit. I hope my trembling legs don't betray me as I step out onto the pavement outside. It's not my nature to try and seduce somebody for my benefit. So much so that my attempt at it has left me feeling rather queasy. I don't know if I pulled it off, but now I've left the cafe, I can't look back to see what effect I had on Kojiro, if any. He seems to be a nice dude, weird but nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I crossed the... Yeah, but... Yeah. I crossed the road and a shiver runs down my spine. I hope I'm prepared for what I'm getting myself into. Oh, I feel like this is where we should call it. Also, we're back at the mall. This is the mall from the first part. All right, I'm going to save. Because it's 9.53. And, uh... I, oh! He wasn't there before. Was she there before? Was that gurney there before? Is that a gurney? I don't know. I'm going to have to go look back at the original VOD to see if those were open. Because I started up the game and she was just there. So that was just like, okay, whatever. But he was not there. Wait, there's multiple endings? What's Crow Factory? Oh, I'm con okay. Well, there's, there's things coming. Anyways, my friends, this is where I'm going to call it because it's slightly pat or before normal stream time um and i have to go check the recording to see if it has the audio stuff i need and all that stuff and maybe i can figure out how to recover some obs settings that got lost super frustrating um but i'll be checking that out but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me hope you guys enjoying th this is get this game turned into a ride and has some heavy subject matter that i was not anticipating so uh, i have to put warning messages in front of the, the videos and stuff now but thank you guys so much for being here i appreciate you thank you guys uh look jada's jada's face is slightly out of frame there you go and thank you guys so much for hanging out with me remember to spay new to your pets adopt don't shop don't donate to a rescue if you can afford it or open up your house up to the possibility of fostering as a very rewarding experience and helps those animals and rest out there very much you need anyways i basically thank you so much for letting me be a streamer tonight i heavily appreciate it and I'll catch you all next time. See ya. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you hungry? Yeah, yeah, you hungry? Let's go bedtime.